Well, good morning, everybody. This is Scott. Welcome to the New York Session Live Trading Room. Don't forget that trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Before deciding to trade foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, your level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest any money that you cannot afford to lose. Be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So, welcome to the best live trading room in the Forex, bar none. All you got to do is ask our traders. So, a couple things you need to know. Forex, Forex Target Trading LLC is the educational part of our business model. It's the methodology that we use. Proact Traders LLC is the technology part of our business. It's the software that we use. So we combine the methodology with the ProAct charting software to create our uh, results. And our results are taken from actual traders using the combination above and then average for our pip capture. Now since many traders take only two or three of them and other people may take two or three, it's virtually impossible for you to, to match our record unless you took every single trade and you never slept and you traded every single market, all three markets. So don't think that you can uh, match the record. It's just an a, a running total. So in other words, this is our traders, traders record, not my record. My record doesn't count. Your record is what counts. Things to know. We are training setups, not trades. Any decision to take a trade is yours. We are training what an RF1010 or a 6 Aces trade setup looks like in a live trading environment, not after the fact. So I may say this is a valid RF1010 setup. Enter when ready. That is a trade setup, but it's not yet a trade. You, emphasis is on you, you still have to look for T30s, any previous support or resistance, any FIB barriers that are in the way today. You must assess the risk and reward. You must know the target and you must know the stop loss. If you don't know the target and you don't know the stop loss, you are not a trader. You are a gambler. Wait for a hook or a center and if everything is right, then you make the decision to take the trade, not me. So stops are always going to be the technical stop. We may say the stops around 110.12. You must use the technical stop, which is the last support or resistance, depending on your direction, plus five to seven pips on a number that ends in a three or a seven. So in this case, it must be 110.13 or 110.17. We also never use a five because five is used often in option contracts. Stops should be moved to break even after 17 to 21 pips depending on the real estate of the day. So in other words, it's not automatic. At 17 to 21 pips, you look and see if you might be able to move your stop. Anything spoken of in the room is an opinion, not a trade call. Everybody in the world is entitled to their opinion, including me, but my opinion is not a trade call. This is not a trade room. It's a training room. But we do make documented pips in here, and we are here to teach you to fish, not give you a fish. We're training how to use our methodology combined with the ProAct charting software to its full advantage as a service to our live room subscribers. So, I want to welcome our demo traders here. Anybody here on a one-day pass, we're glad you're here. Hopefully you see some things you like. I think you're going to find out pretty quickly that we are a big Forex family and everybody here is helping everybody to get better. Okay. We are Forex target traders. That means many trading opportunities we, we identify are not entered during the New York session, but they may fulfill in subsequent sessions. That does not change the trading opportunity. So we will also do a heads up after the session that is recorded. We do that every day except Friday because there is no session after Friday in New York. If you're a demo trader, you must pay special attention during that recording. Live Room subscribers have the ability to review that recording, but you do not. Live Room subscribers also get chart alerts if we see anything later, but this just means go look at the charts since these will not be trade setups, just things to watch for. They look like this and they have uh, they do have stops and limits, but the, these are sent out anywhere from 3 to 12 hours ahead of the market. So it's just a starting point for you in the wide open space and to see if the real estate still holds up and whether these numbers are still good. Now any alerts either talked about verbally or sent to live room subscribers are for educational purposes only. This is not a trade signal calling system of business. 
please use your real name. We don't like to use uh, fake names or my big fat FX. It doesn't work for us. No swearing in the room. No sound. You just log out and log back in. It's a, an internet issue on your end, not on our end. There are no dumb questions in here. And all ProAct live sessions are recorded. So anytime we're live, it's being recorded. Now, it's not about trading every day. It's about trading that one right day. You make money by waiting, not by trading. Sounds so silly, nobody wants to believe it, but it's true. The one trade you're going to learn in here is the wait trade. We wait for our trade to come to us. So I'm going to look at the RF 1010 trade setup now. So pay attention. This is a trade setup we look for every every session. It's the first momentum move of the session. Could go 25 to 30 pips on initial thrust, and it could end up going 80 or 90 by the time it's all over. All right. So we're looking to make a buy here, and it's found on the RF 1010. It's called the RF 1010 because it's found on the Royal Flush template. That's the RF part, and we use the two 10-minute charts. That means that the 60-minute gatekeeper here is not part of this set, setup. So we're looking for a buy on the euro. How do we get into that? First thing that has to happen is our gatekeeper has to set up. All right, so what are we looking for? First thing is a blackjack. That's that black candle down there. Nothing magical about it. Hits the moving average. We turn it black so we can find it. But we ask that candle to tell us what direction is the money coming in. It puts a green diamond on the bottom, so it says the money's coming in in a buy. We're interested because we're looking for a buy. Next thing we need is the moving average to be green because we're looking for a buy. Next thing we need is candles above that moving average because we're looking for a buy. And finally, we need the momentum indicator called the HMI. We need it to turn from red or black to green because we're looking for a buy. All right, as you can see, that didn't happen. So we have to wait a couple of candles. We wait a couple of candles. Everything gets in harmony here. Now we can go up to the trigger. What do we need up here? Up here we need a bright neon painted green arrow and painted candle. All right, just be the opposite going down. All right, so there it is. That tells us momentum is entering to the upside. But the RF1010 is a trade setup out of the desert. What is the desert? The desert is the highest moving average and the lowest moving average. If we're inside the desert, we do not have this trade setup. So we wait for the candle to pop out of the desert. It does so on that long candle there. That's called the trigger candle. And we will take the very next candle on one condition that we have total harmony down in the gatekeeper still. All right, a little bit more about the trigger candle. Before we enter, we let it center. What does that mean? All right, before we enter any trades, we let it center on itself. So the trigger candle goes off and takes off and goes up 20 pips. What do we do? Nothing. We wait for it to come back on itself halfway or center on itself, which in this case would be 10 pips. We will then take the trade from there on one condition that we have room to the targets. Now, it's very important. We never make an entry unless we know the exit. All right. Now, that's also important because we could get additional triggers. If we get an additional trigger, can we take this trade? The answer is yes. We've got plenty of room to the next target. Then we get another one up here. Can we take this one? And the answer to that is no, we can't. We're too close to the target. So you're a newbie, though. You say, yeah, but man, you could get five or eight pips up there. Why don't you go grab them? You'd be right. You could get five or eight pips up there. And that's exactly what the average retail trader does. They trade for five to eight pips. And so, that, so they then must be right 90% of the time for the rest of their life. It's not possible for you to be 90% correct for the rest of your life unless you are the greatest trader on the planet. Now, if you are the greatest trader on the planet, don't stop doing what you're doing and you don't need to be in this room. But if you're not the greatest trader on the planet, you have got to stop trading for five to eight pips and learn to trade to targets. So you decided to take that trip, uh, that trade and get five to eight pips and guess what? The big boys can't make that trade so they go away from the target so they can go at it again. You get stopped out and what do you say? Ah, a daggon broker stopped me out again. No, the broker did not stop you out again. You took a trade you never should have taken because you took it right into a target that you didn't know was there. All right, so now I'm going to show you an illustration of a sell, okay? Uh, remember, the 60 minute is not part of this trade setup, so I'm looking for a sell. So now I need a blackjack the other way. There it is to the downside. I need the moving average down. There it is to the downside. I need candles below the moving average. There they are, down, down there. 
All right, and I also need the momentum indicator telling I have enough gas in the tank to drive this to the target. Check, I got everything I need down here. I go up here looking for an arrow and a painted candle, and not only do I have an arrow and a painted candle, I also have a white dot. The white dot says we are potentially going 55 pips. All right, so I have a potential trade set up here. The question is, do I have a trade? And the answer is, no, I don't. And the reason I don't is because I'm right above the 93.00 number. We never trade into a 00 number or a 0 .50 number because option contracts are sitting on those numbers. If there's an option contract on it and it executes it, then the trade will go the opposite way. So we need to have a, be able to move our stop to break even if we're going to trade into an even number or a 0.50. That's number one. Number two, we're still inside the desert here. So you see, folks, a trade setup is not a trade. And retail traders get this wrong all the time. All right? So if you're new to our room, I'm going to quickly go uh, through the 19 currencies and then we're going to come back on those that show promise. Please hold your questions until then and we will answer them. But today we also have a fundy. All right? So how do we trade a fundy? All right? We need to always be flat before a fundy. All right? That means that any currency that's going to be affected by this fundamental announcement, that's why it's called a fundy, uh, you have to get flat on it because your stops are not guaranteed during a fundy. So what do we do? We turn it to a one-minute chart. And on the one-minute chart, we will have a reaction to the news. The news comes out, the market reacts to it. Okay? What do we want it to do? We want it to go sideways for three to five candles. All right? Why do we want to do that? Because we don't want to get caught in a whipsaw, number one. Number two, we, uh, they're telling us if they don't do that and they go sideways, there are no sellers based on this announcement. Therefore, there can only be buyers in the market. So we go above that sideways move, find any resistance above it and get above that. We place an entry order, never a market order, on one condition that we have room to the target. All right? So our job prior to a fundy is to find uh, uh, room for the announcement and then room for the follow through. And we have to have at least a one to one risk to reward ratio. So let's go in the charts now and let's see what happens. All right, folks. Everybody see me and hear me? So we have a CAD Fundy this morning. All right, so here's what. Now, let me remind you, this morning we had a lot of announcements at 7.30, bam. You watch what happened, a lot of reversals. That's why you get flat. If you don't get flat, now tomorrow is the mother of all fundies, non-farm payroll. Be flat. Be on the sidelines waiting for the reaction. We have a way to trade the reaction, but we don't want to be in the market prior to that because that's asking them to come take your money. All right? So, um we're here on the CAD, and we see we, we have been sitting here going for days and days right up here in the top, okay? So since that is happening, the question then becomes, okay, why are they sitting up here and not coming down? Well, that's because they're not convinced they need to go down. So we may have to adjust this trend. So let's adjust the trend and see what it shows us, okay? And when you adjust the trend, you don't do that just because it's willy-nilly, all right? You got to have it on a resistance. You still got to have it on a support, and you still—they still got to prove to you they know where that heart line is. And see, they know where that heart line is right there. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and allow that. I'm now, I'm, you know, I'm not totally sold that that's that's correct. All right, but if I did do get a buy on the Canadian this morning, I now know that this target's gone. That means the next target is up here at 11, 1296. Call it 1300. I'm currently sitting here at 1100. All right. So I got 12, 200 pips up there, folks. So, you know, I could make, uh, I can do pretty well on that if we have a dollar negative, all right? If the, I mean, excuse me, a dollar positive. Dollar positive, the dollar CAD uh, would, would be a, a trade to the upside if it's dollar positive, all right? Reason for that is that the, the dollar is the base currency, all right? So what you're seeing is not, when we're talking about the dollar CAD, you're seeing the movement of the dollar here against the Canadian dollar. That's the dollar right here, right? So if it's dollar positive, that means the dollar would continue to go up, all right? So that's it. All right, now we still have other crosses that we trade. We trade the uh, uh, we trade the CAD yen. That's got a Canadian dollar in it. So let's go look and see what we got here. All right, so you saw yesterday we were in the wedge. We were waiting for, or do we get a break to the north? If we broke to the north, we weren't interested because it was against the trend. But we are now interested in a sell if we get that. So the quick question is, if we get a sell, all right, now what would that be? That would mean the CAD would be negative, all right? Uh, CAD negative, 
would be the CAD yen. Now, the problem is it's got to go from 56 down to 12 before we can ever trade it. It's got to come down before here we can trade it. So we can't trade this until after the announcement, right? After the announcement, if it's if it's uh, CAD negative, we can trade it afterwards. But we, we, don't, we don't want to sit here and wait 40 pips for it to get in position. So we walk away from from that until afterwards. Let's see if the, if the announcement does do that, okay? And that is it. All right, so we have, well, basically we got to have a CAD, a dollar positive announcement on the CAD or a CAD negative, right? So I mean, CAD, let me say that again. All right, CAD, it's got to be CAD negative, which would be dollar positive, all right? CAD negative would be, is, would be dollar positive. And we would trade the dollar CAD to the upside. Sorry, I said that wrong the first time. All right. All right. So there we are. All right. So, uh, you know, another thing about it is that when you get into these fundies, you're going to hear people talking all the time, blah, 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 blah. The currency ought to go, blah, 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 blah. I, mean, I don't listen to one single commentator. All right. Years ago, I used to. I'd watch those. And I would always go, oh, that guy's smarter than me. Therefore, he knows what's really happening. I'll follow him. And talk called lose your money. All right, the talking heads do certain things like this. All right, uh, the dollar CAD reacted today on news that the oil was not going to be sold to America at the high enough levels to uh, withstand their GDP. Blah 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 blah. Instead of saying, here's what they did: the the dollar CAD hit the trend wall and had an 80 percent chance of the heart heart line. See, that's what ends up happening. But they don't say that because that doesn't sell advertising. So what do I think about Draghi and uh, speaking? I think you've got to sit on the sidelines and let the market tell you what they think. Don't think what it's going to do. Sit on the sidelines, wait for them to, to, to do their little blah, blah, blah thing, and the market will react. And then if you have set your charts up, you will know how to trade it or whether you should sit on your hands until that's all over with. All right? That's it. Now, that's why tomorrow is non-farm payroll. What is that? That is the economic barometer of the entire United States, which means it, affect, it, uh, it is all about what is this U.S. dollar really worth, all right? So that's what it's about. So tomorrow, you are absolutely flat in the market. That means no trades on anywhere. Wait for the reaction to the market. When the reaction comes, oh, I won't trade. I'm not even going to be in here. I'm not even going to be in front of my computer in front of non-farm payroll. I have no intention of trading it. All right. There's Jerry. Uh, talking heads never know what the market will do, but the market does. Exactly correct, Jerry. Thank you. Jerry is my partner at ProAct, and uh, he's the guy who helps you get your stuff working. For those of you who don't know him. All right. So, all right, let's take a look and see what we're doing here. For the first time, this week, we're finally getting a reaction on the euro. Does everybody see this? A, now, do I rest my case about the euro is a piece of junk? The euro is a piece of junk, and now finally we get an, uh, an announcement that makes the thing move. Other than that, it's not doing the thing. I am not trading an announcement up here. It's a downtrend. This is a corrective move. When it gets up here, if it sells, I'm interested. If it doesn't do that, I'm not interested in this currency at all, and I'm rarely interested in it. Uh, it's got to be perfect for me to take the, uh, take the euro because all the dumb money's over here, folks. Ah. All right, British pound. British pound is in a real pro quadrant uh, problem. They're going sideways, as you can see. Uh, what does that mean? All right, sideways move means a continuation. So sideways says we're going to try to continue. What's the problem? The day chart trend wall is here. So they can't do it till they get plenty of room to do it. So they're just moving sideways over here. So for us, there's nothing this morning on the British pound dollar, pound dollar. Uh, we already looked at the CAD for the announcement. We'll be back for that. So uh, yesterday we were watching for the dollar Swissy. Will it get out of the out of the uh, uh, of the wedge? And as you can see, it is now broken through the first barrier. It's now broken through the second barrier. Okay, so we're finally out of the wedge. All right. Now this is good for us because we are looking for a sell on the dollar Swissy, right? Because the overall trend is to the downside. All right? But now there's a problem with this currency. What is it? The ATR is 69 pips, all right? a little more than uh, two T30s. So there's one, one T30, there's two T30s. That's what it normally does in a whole 24-hour period of time. It's done three of those down to here. All right? So what has it done? It has exceeded its ATR, all right? which means that more than likely it won't go anywhere. Now it can. It can do anything you want, and I will trade it to the downside if it can break, hook, and go here. 
but I have to wait for that reaction, all right? Uh, and the two-day ATR is only 36 pips. Wow, crazy, as it waits for uh, non-farm payroll. Why? Because it's a U.S. dollar-based currency. That's the base currency in it, all right? So everybody goes to sleep on it, all right? If you don't know that, you need to know that, all right? Dollar yen, same thing. U.S. dollar based currency, sideways move. It has an ATR of 103. We just had an announcement this morning. It reacted to the to uh, the upside. The dollar reacted positively to that, most likely on the unemployment claims being uh, being less. Right? Who knows? Who cares? I don't care. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, non-far payroll slows everything down because the position traders will not take a position. In the current in the market, because the, the the position they take could be absolutely wrong on Friday when the non-farm payroll comes out, so they don't make that trade. They wait for it to happen. So all these traders are out of the market. Intraday traders are in here. All right. So uh, we're looking for a sell. We're up here at the top, we're not getting a sell, so we're walking away from the dollar yen. All right. And hopefully you see the discipline that says there's nothing here. Walk away. All right. How many times have we sat here today looking for trades for the last three days and none existed? We didn't make any trades. And then people go, man, you didn't make any trades in there. That's called discipline. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. If there are no trades, you should make no trades. Pure and simple. Right? So we're still working in this channel, as you can see. This is still left over from the Aussie announcement earlier this week. All right? There it is. All right? Now this was a announcement. This was a uh, alert from yesterday, and also alert from last night. And I'll pop that up for you real quick here, uh, just so you can see it. Uh, come here, number two. All right, Ozzy was a buy all right, at 83, 8934, 8934 is right here. 8934 uh, after the pullback. Okay, there's the pullback. There's the 8934. And the limit is 8995. 8995. Hadn't quite got there yet. Okay. 8995 is here. We got up to 84. We got within nine pips of the target. All right. So we'll, we'll come back and find out how people did on that. But I just want to see. We did that way before that yesterday. That was done at 5:40 yesterday afternoon. Way before that, and that all happened. All right. So there was traders made some money on that. All right. What are we doing now? We're still trying to get up to that 8994, 9000, and maybe 9016. So we're looking for this opportunity up to 9016. Right? So if we uh, if they sell dollars today, Ozzy should go up to that side. Right? What are they doing with dollars? Let's go check it out. All right? Currently on dollar, they are selling dollars. Okay, so that's good for us on the Ozzy. They're selling dollars today, which means the Ozzy should go to the upside. We're waiting for the Ozzy to go out upside. What are we doing? Waiting. See that? That's the big key. What most traders don't have in their arsenal is this trade. The most important trade to have in your arsenal is the wait trade. Right? The most important trade to have. Right? Wait for your trade to come to you. 99% right? of retail traders are over trading. There are only one or two opportunities per session, folks. Right? And in the Euro, there may not even be any. I'm in the New York session. All right? All right, so this was a bear flag. I waited and waited and waited. Now we've got a fundy underway. There's nothing to do until this all shakes out. So just walk away. It's all caused by a fundamental announcement. There's nothing you can do. Just wait for it to finish over and get out of the way, and then maybe we'll go back to doing what we were doing. Same thing here in the British pound. Same exact thing going up to the top side right there. Nothing to do. Wait till it's done. We're in downtrends. These are then become the market uses these as corrective measures to get up where the sellers are. Professional sellers will not sell at the bottom. Professional sellers will sell at the top. This announcement allows them to get up to the top so they can sell it off. How many announcements do you think we have? We have 56 a month. There are tons of announcements all the time. All right? When it goes with the market, they use it. When, if it. Even when it goes against the market, if they need to use it, they'll use it for that. So they can set up the structure so that they can technically trade, folks. Just forget it. That's what they're doing. All right, New Zealand dollar back up to the top here. We're waiting to see if we get a sell-off. Right now, there's not much sign that that's going to happen, but they are selling dollars today. So what will happen here? That means it's either continue to go sideways or they will break it out. Now, if they want to keep this trend intact, they won't break it out because right now they're at the place where they need to sell it. All right, but they're selling dollars today, which is not what this needs to be doing. All right. So that's not good. Right? Now, if it does break out, that means maybe they remember it follows the Aussie. So if it does break out, once it breaks out, we will find the targets to the upside. Right now, we can't do that. We're still in, we're still in play for the sell. We're not a buyer. We're a seller. 
Yeah, but man, it's going up. Well, what it proves to me it's going up is when it's outside of this. It's got to be have to be outside this trend, and it's got to be above this support. I mean, resistance. Once it's above here, okay, I'll now I'll now believe that you possibly are an uptrend. All right. But here's the problem. In order to get an uptrend on, we got to have three points. Right. So we'd have to come in here like this to get a 45 degree angle. Do we have this part right here? No, we don't have the second part and the third part to confirm a trend. So all traders are on the sidelines with this thing right now. The only thing they know is that there's a possibility for a sell. They don't know anything else. Right? So we're going to walk away from the currency. And that's what you got to be able to do, folks. You got to be able to walk away from the currency when it's not talking to you and telling you this is what we're going to do. Right? Again, same thing here. Now, this one came up. You recall yesterday we talked about this. We said we're looking for an A, B, C retracement to the top. When we get here, we'll decide if we're going to sell it off or break out. Right now they have a breakout, but they have to take this top out. Until they take this top out, we are no we're not a buyer yet. All right? We may be a buyer, but we're not a buyer yet. We are, are immediately a seller, but we are not yet a buyer. All right? Now, the problem is if we get a buy, there is no room. See, there's no room here. First time we get any room for a trade is up here. So there's nothing for us on the Aussie yen until we get up to 91.77. All right. So I'm going to draw, hang, pull this down up, up here, and that's the first time we're going to get a chance to trade because this is the first wide open space that we can see in the chart. All right. And that's the only place that we will trade. If there is no wide open space, we don't manufacture a trade. That's it. Wide open spaces, the only place we'll trade. There are no wide open spaces here. So we put that on the shelf. There's nothing, nothing there. Uh, Euro pound. All right. Yes, we've been talking about this Euro pound now for several days, waiting for the breakout. It's now happened. Okay. So what do we need? We need a break, a hook, and a go. All right. We've got the break. As you can see, that's off the fundamental. So we got to wait. See, I don't like the wait. I know you don't like the wait, but you got to. Remember yesterday we did a little study. How many, uh, how many times the currency will retrace on itself? All right. And over 99% of the time it's going to do that. All right. So here we got a square up that needs to take place. They need to come down here and then bounce. All right. That's a highly probable uh, um, situation. Why? Because 99% of the, the currency or the, the candles are going to retrace. That one has not retraced and that one has not retraced. All right. All right. So we're, we'll wait for the retracement. The retracement down will give us the opportunity to take the bounce right there. All right. So we're going to look for that EJ on the bounce. All right. Not finding much over there in the majors. Okay, we've got about 60 sec 40 seconds left, folks. I'll see if I can catch another one, and then we'll go watch the Canadian. All right. All right, so uh, Pound Aussie. All right, Pound Aussie was a trade from yesterday. Uh, we pulled it up here. Pound Aussie was number three here. Uh, pound Aussie with a sell at 82.68. Uh, oh, wait, I'm on the Euro Aussie. Never mind. Sorry, I thought I was on the Pound Aussie. Uh, I'm on the Euro Aussie. All right, so never mind that. All right, Euro Aussie was the pole. We were looking for this trade to go from below here, right here, all the way down to here. It started down here like this, and then the announcement came out and drove it right back up here. And right, I did use this as, as the uh, blog this morning because I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that if it did go the right way, where to go. Trade one was right here, and trade two was right here. All right, it is dollar positive. All right, that doesn't do anything for us. We need a dollar negative. All right, so we need a dollar negative. So let's go watch the Canadian for a minute, though, and see what they do with this. All right, they made it, and this is what happens. So a lot of times they'll just ignore it and say, "Oh, okay, all right, we're, we're, we'll ignore that." Uh, first thing they're going to do, though, is they're going to take in these stragglers, stragglers, stragglers. Sorry. Stradlers are first on the list. All right? So first on the list, as you can see, there's nobody here. It doesn't take by. They only got about four pips spread. So they've already got the sellers in. They just need to come back up here and they'll get the buyers in. All right? So they got the sellers in already. All right? And that's it. So it's quite positive. Yeah. They want to go. Why are they going the other way? So they can cream the dumb money. That's how they do it, folks. They got to understand that. Their job is to take your money. That's a zero-sum game out there. 
There's $800 billion every single day with retail traders in the market. The job of the bank is to go get that from you. And most of you oblige them. Why? Because you don't learn how to do it. You have no patience. You have no discipline. You don't have the education. And you refuse to go get the experience, which means I've got to go paper trade one, two, three hours a day in the past. All right? Why? Because I want to be an indicated junkie, man. I just want this to be easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Anything worthwhile is not easy. So it looks like they're coming down to square up this candle, right? See that? They're going to come down and square that candle up right, right on the moving average. Once they get that squared up, they're good to go. See? If you don't understand square up, we do teach squaring up. We're just not going to do it in here. It's too much of a thing. But we teach all about squaring up, why the market does that. See, the thing about traders they need to understand, you need to know why the market does things. It's easy to know how. You go to MT4 and you push buy. You go to MT4 and you push shell. Uh, that's the how. You got to know why. Why do I want to do that? Why do I? Does the market doing what it's doing? Why are they doing what they're doing? Because they're big boys. They're predictable. They do the same thing all the time. Once you know what they do, you can follow them with your little account compared to their big account. That's all you got to do. All right? That's why we trade the 240 and a 60 chart. 60-minute chart. We don't trade that lousy little dinky chart. Why? Because the big boys aren't there. They're not below an, an hourly. Don't believe it? What do they say in the commentaries? The hourlies are oversold. The hourlies are overbought. Right. So not much happening here on this CAD on this one right here. Let's go see what the CAD yen is doing, if anything, also. Because it's got because it's got a CAD and we should see a reaction here. Right. So I'm down here on one minute chart and you see the reaction is to the upside in the CAD yen here. Right there. All right. And what are we looking for? We're looking for a down. Let's right, see. We need a sell. But this is good. See? We like this when it does this. Why do you like it? Because we're now up here where the sellers are. All right. Nobody was interested. Professional sellers will not sell at the bottom. Professional sellers will stay sell at the top. Why? Because of risk and reward. The reward just down to the double bottom for the risk is great. It's easy. Right? And that doesn't count if they get a break hook and go and be able to press their winners without exception here. Right? So that's why. So this is a good for us, not bad for us. Yeah, but I'm trying to trade down, man. Yeah, the higher it goes, the more profit the downside. Aren't you willing to wait until that happens? No, man, I'm not willing. I called my boss today and told him I was sick so I could come in the room and trade with you. By gosh, I'm making a stinking trade. That's what happens. You don't need to be in here to do that. You'll do that by yourself. If there is no trades, you don't make a trade. But if there is, you've got to figure it out and pounce on it, and you don't let it pass. Those traders who've done that so far this week, we're over 1,000 pips already this week, folks. I don't know if you know that, but there are over 1,000 pips from traders so far this week, and it's just Thursday. So in the last three days, just three days, 1,000 pips, averaging 300 pips a day. Uh, and we haven't had one live trade in the New York session, not one. We did have two on Monday, but everybody was blabbing so much questions we never could get to them. Uh, we missed two trades for 100 pips apiece on Monday. That would have been nice to have, but everybody was talking and yapping and wanting to know crazy stuff. Things have calmed down quite dramatically since then. Thank you. All right, so you can see there's nothing happening here. We are interested in the sell. So how do I do this? If this comes down to this line right here, I'm going to be interested. So what do I want to do is I'm going to set alert to it and say, I want you to tell me when you're below that price, notify and play me a sound. Don't send me an email. I'm right here. Notify and play me a sound. And now I have a little a little uh, bell on here that's a horn. It's going to let me know if it hits this line. I'm not interested until I hit that line. Why? Because I've got to take out the barrier. All right, so you can see, there we are. I'm going to have to be below here and below here before I ever get a trade. So I can walk away from this one right now. I'm interested only in sell, not in a buy. So that's that one. All right, back over to the dollar can. Waiting for it to, they're going to go up. They, they finished this move off to the downside, it looks like. Who knows? We'll see. They had to come down to the moving average. They went down to the moving average, see? Now they bounced on the moving average. Let's see if they pop it up and take the buyers in. They've got the sellers in already. All right. And so, and remember, this is a a uh, it's a dollar and uh, it's a Canadian positive, which means the dollar should go to the downside, which is doing that's the base currency part. It is doing that, right? 
We don't want that trade. We want the dollar positive. We want it to the upside. So they got to shake this off. So probably nothing going to happen here, right? Until then, we do know that we won't be able to make this trade until we're above a 1.1123 because we'd have to do a, an entry order above here. So I'm going to put a, a, a line on here at this level, change the color so I know it's not a PSR. Uh, make it green, and I'm going to put alert here, and then I don't have to watch this currency. I can just wait until the alert alerts me that we're here. I want to know that we're equal to or above this price. All right, so there we go. Don't send me that, and I play. So oh, I got it there. I can walk away. All right, we'll keep working now. All right, let's go over here to the pound chief. Uh, pound chief, we're waiting for this break to the downside. All right, been waiting for this all week, as you can see. All right, and so far it has not broken, but it's very, very close to happening. This is one heck of a line, as you can see. I made it very thick because it's been used multiple, multiple times. All right? So breaking it is significant, and if we break it, there's our trade. It should be very clear, evident trade right there. So we call a snowman. Two wide open spaces on top of each other. Trade one is here. Trade two is here. There is no way we will not be able to press our winners without exception in that area. All right. Waiting for the break to the downside. All right. So let's take this down to the 10-minute chart. And what do we see now? We have a break and a hook. Okay. So we got a break and a hook right now. We're looking for the go. All right. Break hook. Waiting for the go. It's very close to happening. GCH. All right. To the downside. All right, we'll see if we get a turn. All right. Keep going. All right, Pound Aussie. All right, Pound Aussie was a trade from yesterday. And uh, this is number three. Let me pop this up here. And here we go. That should be this first one right here. Pound Aussie sell. All right, sell was at 82.68. 82.68 right here. And the target was 82.38, which is right about here. All right. So just a little 50 pip trade in there. Of course, it went quite a bit further. Went down to 270 fib. We now have a pole working, so we all know what that means. Whatever that is going in is what it's going to come in, coming that back out. So we're looking at coming down below 8100 if we get another break here. All right. So we'll find out how people did on that IC alert. All right. So it should have made at least 50, maybe 80, maybe 100 pips on that trade right there. All right. We talked about it in session recap. It'll pull back up. To here, we'll start looking for it at the 30, 382 and may go up as high as a 50% fib. There's the arrow saying, look for the sell here. It went up, fell, uh, could not go any higher, break of that, and you're in for the target. Very simple. Not hard, folks. Why, does it, why did that trade work? Very simple to see. It's a wide open space. All right. Yesterday we were looking for this trade all day long too. We were waiting, 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 waiting to see if we can break up in here and get that first part and then the second part. As you see, it has not happened yet. It's gone through three or four or five sessions and has not moved above that line. All right. So anybody who has traded this trade is a gambler because this is the trade right there. Right there is the trade. Now advanced traders can trade it off the bottom. Why? Because professional buyers don't buy at the top. Professional buyers buy at the bottom. And you say, then why are you waiting for this? Isn't this the top? No. When you break, hook, and go, this becomes the new bottom. That's why you wait for a break, hook, and go. Now it's a bottom. Professional traders trade at the bottom. That's why we get a break, hook, and go. So that the professional traders will trade it. All right? Oh, that's why. Yes, and we're professional traders, so we trade it. And we wait for that. And we don't. We have rules. Not guidelines. Rules. All right, so we're waiting to see if that will happen again today. Uh, we waited all day yesterday. It didn't happen. Waited all last night. For those of you who are in London, it didn't happen. All right, so we're still waiting. That's all I can tell you. Can, that's called trading. 99% of the time, you're waiting. All right, there's only one-tenth of 1% one of the time where you're actually pushing the button. All right, here we are. We're at the Ferrari. That's the pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand can get up, and it can rock and roll. That's all there is to it. All right, so uh, this is what we're looking for. Right there, that's that move. Have we got it yet? No, we have not. Have we taken out the support yet? No, we have not. Can we trade it until we take out the support? No. How strong is the support? Oh, I don't know. Looks pretty doggone strong. What do you think? You see that? No wonder it's having trouble, right? 
We're up here on a 240 chart. If you're not up here looking at this, trying to figure out where your trades are, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna be successful. We gotta find out what the big boys are doing. They're up here on the 240, going, boys, we gotta break this thing because we got this problem and this problem here. All right. Let's see if we can get it going. Once they get it going, it'll probably pile drive down there. Why? Because it's a wide open space, and that's what they did the last time. It's a wide open space, and that's what they did the last time. Once we get in here, it's a wide open space. That's what they'll probably do this time. You see that? Don't want to miss that trade. All right? It isn't here yet. That's right. It's not here yet. All right? But it's trying. As you see, they're trying. All right? So we'll see if they break it in this area. If they break it in this area, there's no question we want this trade. Okay? And uh, we talked about yesterday about uh, fast trackers taking it off the top. So we'll see how many of those guys did that when we get to the session recap. Two to go. New Zealand yen. All right? New Zealand yen has had the breakout now. All right, so now we're convinced we're into this trade here, and uh, we've taken out the top. You see that what we had today, just because you take a trend out doesn't mean anything. You've got to take the resistance out, all right? So we're now going to put a trend on here, all right? And this trend is going to be too steep right here. So let's try this one right here and see what we do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't particularly care for that one. Take that off. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is an anomaly then. Right here, that becomes an anomaly. You've got to prove the heart line right there, off the top, off the bottom, right? In a 45, less than 45 degree angles, which is eight to two, which we got. All right, so pull back and go. We're looking for that up there. All right, so let's go. Really quickly, and look for the targets up to the upside. So we're ready to go. All right. Yeah. Come on. Up on a 240, I'm looking for where, where. So there's a one right here. We're right on it. We just passed over it. All right. So we'll leave that alone. That we just passed that one. There's one right here. Right there, creates that move up there. There's one right here. I'm not there. That one didn't go. We gotta have a, a, one that gives us a high. One right there. Uh, what's this one do? That one's good for that one there. I'll just leave that one alone right there. All right. And there's another one right there. All right. So see, it doesn't take long as your charts are ready to go. All right. We're ready to rock and roll. All right. So this one's gotta be hard. Turned over. All right, we're good. That's how come over. Now we'll start one from over here today. So, all right, first move to the top starts from this bottom right here. All right. So now we can see where's the wide open space right here. All right. We can trade in here. Can't trade in here. We could have traded here if if we'd have been on top of it, but we weren't here yet. So we could have made that trade right there, but we're too late. That's why, uh, you know, when you're trading by yourself, you already got that done. All this is done, you've already figured it out. All right, so there we go. All right. uh, let's see if we get a pullback. Now, if we get a pullback, we can make the trade up to there. What's the percentage chance of this, can, of this candle getting retraced on? 99%. So we need a break, hook, and go. What does that mean? If it break, hooks, is the break, and it hooks back down and goes, then we will take the trade to here, and we will double our position in the wide open space above there. Very simple to see. All right, that's what we're going to do. Right. Will that happen? I don't know if it'll happen. Ozzy Chief. Chief. Trying to get through these as quickly as I can. Waiting to see if we get a bounce here off this thing. All right here. If we get a bounce back up, we're in an uptrend. We've already had the breakout here. We're looking for this trade. All these targets have been taken out, so it's gonna it should be a simple move to go up to there. And we will take that trade right there uh, to the upside. All right, uh, Skip Diggs, AD, thank you. Silver, for those of you who can trade it, okay. Our goal, our goal day before yesterday was this trend line. It already hit that. Our goal now made another attempt to it. Has not gotten there yet. It's pulled back now. We'll see if we get a pullback and a move. 1991 up to 2033 is about 40 pips up there, folks. So we'll see about that right there. All right. Now, uh, I wanted to bring into a, one of the things that happens to traders in the beginning is that their psychology is messed up. Why is your psychology messed up? Because you don't know where the market's going. The key to getting your trading psychology set is 
getting your lines on your charts and doing it enough that you have confidence in your ability to find where they're going, confidence in your ability to make a trade and stay into the, to the target. And what happens to you now? You don't have any of that. And so what do you do? You click out for five, eight, 10 pips if you're lucky because you don't know where it's going and you have no confidence. Therefore, your trading psychology is defensive as opposed to being offensive. And what do you end up doing? You end up losing, folks. Why? Because you're in a negative spot. The way you get confidence is you learn how the market works, why it's doing what it's doing, and yeah, quit being scared of money, and fear and greed take over. Exactly right. So that's how you do it, folks. All right. So the other question that somebody asked yesterday was, how do we trade the off-season session all right, outside the two to two and a half hours if we're going to go to sleep? Well, it becomes very clear. Let me pop over here to like that, uh, uh, let me do the Euro Aussie. Let's see if we get that one here. Okay. And here we go. All right. So once you determine where you're going to make the trade, all right, here we are. We're up here like this and we go, you know what? If, if this thing will break this line right here, so how do we make that trade? All right. We place an entry order for here. If I, the question is, if I'm in front of this uh, this computer and it breaks this line, will I push the button here? And if the answer is yes, then you can put an entry order in for a sell stop for the target down here, and you can go to bed. In fact, probably 85 to 90 percent of my personal trades are that entry orders. I don't sit in front of the computer all day, all night. I sit in front of the computer for two hours a day, and I'm done. But the chart tells me where the trade is, it tells me the wide open spaces, and it tells me what I, where I should put my trade on and what my stop and my limit is. It's all simple. Once I know all that information, I simply put it on and I go to bed. Right? Now, because I'm not in front of the computer, I don't get this part down here unless I plan to do an entry order again down here. Right? But that's okay. If I went to bed here and I got eight hours of sleep and I walk out, wake up in the morning with 50 pips in my pocket, I'm doing just fine. Right? How do we make that decision? It's risk and reward. All right. If it breaks here and your stop's going to be here, if this risk is less than the reward, then you can make the trade. It's just that simple. And you can put a sound alert. A lot of our traders, what they do is they put a line down here, they put an alert on the line, and then they have a baby monitor, one right by their computer speaker and one right by their bed. And if it hits this line, it goes bam, 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 and they wake up, they come in there, make the trade. Remember, there's no hurry in the Forex. You don't have to be here in 40 seconds. You can actually get up, brush your teeth, walk in here, wait for the break hook and go, place the trade, find the limit, go back to bed, and see what happens in the morning. All right? That's what you do. Because remember, this is technical analysis and target trading. Target trading doesn't change. You've seen that. We've sat here in the New York session saying, if it gets into this area, we're going to make this trade. And that's a session recap. And what you see is that traders who make those trades are making money. Because that, that doesn't change. A single person who will do the work. What's the problem? Retail traders do not do the work. They're lazy. And that's where your problem is. You have to do the work. You have to first be educated on what and why, and then you're good to go. All right, Pound New Zealand has just broken. Okay, come on, bye, bye. All right, there we go. All right, this is what we're waiting for here. All right, see the money's coming in. You see the white dot just show up really quick? Now, if that prints, we're looking at a 55 pip movement. It hasn't printed yet. It's got to go 10 minutes before it does that. All right, so here was the, here was the line that it had to break. So put a line on it. Right there. That's the line it had to break. So we have a break. We now have a hook. We're waiting for the hook and the go. All right. Where are we going to? All right. Is this going to be a good trade? Here's our target right here. Break, hook, and go to here. All right. What's our stop going to be? It's going to have to be up here. So there's our risk. There's our reward. Can we make the trade? Got a pretty big stop here. All right? Pretty big stop for this. That's because it's got a pound in it. By the way, all pound trades are at least 50 pip stops, right? Get out of your head, you can trade the pound with 30 pip stop. You need a 50 pip stop minimum. So what's this going to be if you're going to trade the British pound? It's going to have to be up here at 50, 53, 98.53. We're going to get in it at 50, uh, roughly at 50. That's a 100 pip stop, folks. I found a 10-minute chart. That's a 100 pip stop. All right. 
uh, yeah, when the you saw the money come in. When the money comes in here like this, all of a sudden, on this this white dot is this arrow and painted candle right here on a 60-minute chart. It's this right here has just happened on a 60-minute chart. Right? So we mark that and bring that information down to you. So you now know that that right there has happened on a 60-minute chart. Why do we care about that? Because the big boys trade, trade the 60-minute chart. They don't trade a 10-minute chart. Their entry is on a 60. So we just saw the big boys throw some money at this thing to try to get it to break through and go to the downside. Now, that's a commitment to make the move. We know that. It's 55 pips. Why? Because that's based on the, on the Fibonacci sequence. 21. 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, 377, and so on, all right? They can't make this trade right here. We can, but they can't, and we don't want to make that trade either, all right? We rarely make those trades, all right? Why? Because of their risk and reward. They're trading without stops. They can't make a, they can't go into their boss and say, you know, boss, I thought I was going to go 21 pips, and I put $150 million on that trade, and it didn't work. They can't do that. They're going to have risk for reward. First chance they get to get risk reward is 55 pips. That's the first Fibonacci sequence they get. And they're looking for this one and this one. But that's the minimum right there. So when they show up, look, see it didn't print. What ended up happening, they threw some money at it, but it wasn't enough to overwhelm them. And so it's gone away. See, that's why we wait for it. Uh, wait, wait, what do you mean you wait? We wait. That's the most important thing to learn. If you don't get anything this week when you're here with us, you need to learn one thing, and this is it. The weight trade is the most important trade in your arsenal. Whatever you do, wait for your trade to come to you. Don't sit there and just push the stinking button. Hey, you push the button. I didn't tell him to push the button. Did you tell him to push the button? Oh, I didn't tell him to push the button. You shouldn't just go push the button. You don't go around and push the string button. I told you, don't push the button. All right, so what's the difference between black outlines and painted candles? Okay, painted candles mean there's lots of momentum driving. There's lots of money pushing that currency, all right? Candles that don't have that, all right, so for instance right here, they, you still have price action pushing it down, still have price action, all right, but you don't have any momentum, all right? When momentum comes in, there's a candle without momentum, and now suddenly, boom, it's a big candle, and now the follow-through comes in, which creates the follow-through, which is bright red, and it goes down to the target, see? So what do we want to do? We want to wait for the bright red down to the target, all right? So what are we waiting for now? We're waiting for a break, hook, and go down to the target. If this comes up here, makes a turn, and goes red, we're fine. Stays bright red, we'll, go, we'll be great. They say, well, that candle's going up as bright red. Yeah, because the momentum is still to the downside. They have not. Right now, the candle is going up, all right, to do the break, hook, and go, but there's more momentum pushing it to the downside. That's right. This is a RF1010 trade setup. Let me just show it to you here. All right. So what do we need? All right. I need to have blackjack. Got it. Moving average down. Got it. Candles below the moving average. Got it. HMI, momentum indicator. Got it. Check. We're good to go here. Up here. Arrow and paint a candle. Great. We got that. What do we need? We're ready to go. We got a trade setup. Do we have a trade? No, we don't have a trade yet. We've got to wait for a break, hook, and go. A trade setup is not a trade. Historically speaking, 99% of the time, it's going to do a break, hook, and go. It's going to center on itself because 99% of the candles retrace. So you don't jump in. Gee, I don't know. I've never done that. I was afraid I was going to miss the move. Yeah, well, you know what? It hadn't proven anything yet. Here's what it's proven. It's proven that it can go below this line. It can go whipsaw this sucker just as easy as it did over here. See what happened over here? Here was the line here. They put a wick down here. Oh, what did they prove? That they could go to the line. Then what did they do? They whipsawed it straight up here. Anybody who made that trade got what? Stopped out here. Done. Doggone it. Stopped out again. Doggone broker took my stop again. No, the broker didn't take your stop. You didn't wait for the break, hook, and go. What are we waiting for? Break, hook, and go. Now, you can go down to a three-minute chart and watch this actually happen. We're going to do that. All right, so I want to show it to you, and that's how we'll watch it. If it turns, it makes a turn. Uh, one of the problems we have is that the, the 1030 bump has not happened. That means there are option contracts that are going to expire here in four and a half minutes or so. All right? So they'll most likely wait for that. We all see it was the 50 number that caused the problem. 
The 50 number, the 50 number, that's 9751 right there. There's 50. That's the problem. 50, 9750. Oh, you think we ought to pay attention to those numbers? Uh, yeah, that's right. We should. All right, so they pull back up. We got a break and a hook. We're waiting to see the money come in. If it comes in, it's enter when ready. You're the guy or girl who has to decide to push the button. I'm not telling you to make the trade. The parameters of the trade have now been met. If you decide you like it, that's when you push the button. If you decide I'm going to watch, that's just fine also. All right, we're fine. I don't really care what you do. All right, we just define what the methodology and the charting software says is an opportunity that you should pay attention to. The decision to make the trade is 100% yours. All right. You see, they're not really pushing this. All right. We've gone up. We have a break and a hook, but we haven't seen much of a go yet to the downside. So we need some big boys to come in. But it's enter when ready. If you see it go, start to go, the decision you have is yours, whether you're going to make it or not. Watching it, watching it. You can also watch it on your tick chart on your broker station. Come on, baby. Let's go. Sometimes you just got to talk to them. All right. We'll open this up in a minute here. Uh, what, if we get this on, then as soon as we get it on, we'll set the limits and stops and go away. All right. We can't do anything about the trade. Nothing we can do. All right. But we know what we're going to do. All right. If we get the trade on, we're going to move our stop here at the 9706, okay? At the 9700, we're going to move it again. We're going to move it into profit, probably down here, all right? All right, once we break through this T30, we'll move our stop to break even. When we're headed down on the down thrust, not on the up thrust. It's got to be on the down thrust. Move your stop to break even if you get it. Right below here, we don't have enough room to the, to the even number to make a trade here, all right? So hold on just a minute. Let's pop this up a little higher now and see how much room we actually got. Oh yeah, see we got all this room down here. This this when you go back this far, this can't anchor on here because when you're down on a lower chart, you can't find that candle. All right. So you see we got one, two, three, T thirties, ninety pips in here. So that line is the target down through here. All right. So we're going back down here, the ten minute chart. All right. That's the target. So below ninety seven hundred. All right. Break hook and go below ninety seven hundred. We're gonna double our position here. All right. We're going to move and we hit the bottom of the channel. We're going to move all the stops down to here. Break even on the last one, profit on the first two. All right? And as it pushes through to here, we're going to move our stop down to the line, to the barrier. And when it gets near this line, you're going to move it very tight. Whatever that, whatever is left is what you're left. It's got to be one to one in here. If it's eight pips to the line, it's eight pip stop. If it's 12 pips to the line, it's a 12 pip stop. If it's six pips to the line, it's six pip stop. All right? That's it. And you don't limit out. Never limit out. Well, there's only one time we limit out, and I don't have time to talk about it here. There's only one time we limit out. All the rest of the time, you move your stop. Why? Because it could go down to here. Yeah, but man, I'd lose these six pips. Okay, let's be a trader. Would you risk six pips for that trade? Of course. Then do it. That's what you do. Uh, yeah, but I want those six pips in my account, man. Okay, well, what can I tell you? You might be a gambler. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Come on, baby. Down to five minutes. We're still watching for it. You see, break, hook. We're waiting to see if they push. They push. Will they push? All right. Start pushing through there. It's enter one ready. Okay, 1030 options have happened. All right, they've now expired. They can now move the market for a half an hour. And then there we get to the 11 o'clock. And then the 11.30. And then we're done. All right, so see, not moving has been a good thing so far. Has everyone seen that? Is there any, there's no hurry in the Forex, folks. I'm sitting here now. We're on a three-minute, five-minute chart. So that's down one, that's five minutes. Up two, that's 10 minutes. Down again, uh, that's 15 minutes. We're now on our next candle, which is 20 minutes. We're 20 minutes into this trade, and we haven't made a trade yet. You see that? 20 minutes, because these are five-minute candles. There's four candles there. We're on our fourth candle. No hurry in the forex. If it breaks, we're going to take it. Let's take a quick look and see what else we got here. The EJ we were looking for. All right. 
and EJ has gone to the top. We never got we never got the uh, pullback. So remember, we had to get a pullback to do this. We didn't get it. So this target's taken out. Oh well. Uh, let's go look here and see. Yeah, done. Yeah, I hate that. Okay, we'll see. Now, if we get a turn here, we're going to be very interested in this turn. Can everybody see that? Because this target's been taken out, right? This bottom has been taken out. Where's our next target? Right here. So where are we? Right here. Anybody interested in that opportunity? That is one heck of a big wide open space. Check the GU, and then we'll go look at the Canadian that we looked at this morning and see what happened. GU just sitting here doing the same thing. We'll wait to see if we get a turn. All right. If we get a turn, we're going to be interested. If we don't get a turn, we can't do anything about it. All right. You see our software is showing the Tom to Mark lines here. They're showing you where the barrier is. They're showing you where the barrier is. All right. That's automatic. It comes on the charts automatically to show you. There's a barrier here. There's a barrier here. Be careful. All right. All right, let's look at the CAD and see, did we make the right decision? Uh, it looks like we made the right decision. See, they're doing nothing here. What about over to the CAD yen? All right. What are they doing? Uh, nothing. Just sitting there going sideways. All right, so they have a very a good announcement. And what are they doing with it? Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. All right, see? So that's a, that's a deal. Now, there's about probably... 400 traders in here right now who would have taken that trade last week who all of a sudden realized uh -oh, uh oh I'm not making that trade see you're seeing that you're pushing forward you're already seeing that you are making progress right good for you so uh, one of the things I want to show you while we're waiting here and then we'll open this up here in just a minute uh, well I got an uh, email from Andrew, Andrew's in the call here. He asked me that. He said, you're welcome to share this. Feel free to share if it's introduction, okay? So he's going to tell us all about, uh, you know, how he's, how he's doing, blah, blah. He's a fast track trader, okay? So why, this is why you never see me post pips on more than one to two trades a day. He's learned that that's it, okay? That's all there is to it. With that being said, I have traded the pound yen every day this week. We're talking about this week. I just got this yesterday. So that was three days, three days this week, pound yen this week, for a three-day pip count. Now, what happens to traders is they hear that we made 40,000 pips. They hear that somebody's going to, and it becomes unbelievable to you because you hang out with people who trade from five to eight. So therefore, it's out of the realm of your comprehension that people could actually be making these kind of money, this kind of pips. That's what happens to you because if you hang out with losers, you're going to end up seeing losers. You hang out with winners, you're going to see people who win, all right? So Andrew is here. He's on here the call right now, and he's here and val it can validate that what he sent me is correct. All right, I'm just putting that up here, uh, so so you see that uh, that this this is not about how does how well does Scott trade. It doesn't matter how good Scott trade. What counts is could I as a trader learn to do this and start making those kind of pips? And the answer is uh, yes. Because Andrew knew nothing about it before. All right. All right. So, uh, Rich, we use the technical stop at all times. Okay. The 30 pip stop is is not a fixed stop. It is a, a general uh, stop. Okay. It's not fixed 30 pips. If you just keep putting 30 pips on, it's based on the real estate of the day. The real estate of the day, is on average for a retail trader, is a great question, by the way, Rich. On average for a retail trader, is around 30 pips. But it might be 32 on this trade. It might be 37 on the next. It might be 26 on the next. It might be 42. If you're trading the British pound, it might be 50 or 80 or 100. See? So uh, there we go. So, um, yeah, Andrew's there. All right, Andrew, if uh, they... Uh, Jeffrey, how do you see a break up and go? That's what we're waiting for. All right, there's a break hook and go. I'll, I'll show you some. There, there, there's a thousand versions of it because the real estate is different. All right, so a uh, thousand versions of a break hook and go is here is a a top. There's a break hook to move down, and there's the go to the upside. Okay? Break hook and go. All right. So here's another one. Here's a top, break, hook, and go. All right, that's what they look like. 
but they could look like it could be ten candles, it could be two candles, it could be one candle uh, inside, it could be anything. See? Uh, we don't give those out. That's proprietary, Lori. Those are proprietary to us. They are one of the keys to our success, uh, being able to define the desert. And when we found that that move right there, we don't give that out. So, so. Uh, what are the dark blue lines on your chart? Just lines that I put on there. That's all. Just, I put lines on for different reasons, barriers that I want to break, those kind of things. All right, um, Pound New Zealand. Okay, where is Pound New Zealand? All right, so we're we're sitting here with a break and a hook. That's all we've seen. There's a break and a hook. We've got a breakdown, and now we got a hook. We're waiting for the go. The go will be a candle to the downside. But as you can see, even though these candles are up, they're still bright red. All right, still bright red. Why? Because we haven't overcome. There's not enough money coming in here. Less money coming in here that created the down move. That means there's no, there are not enough buyers to overwhelm the sellers. See, over here, there were enough buyers to overwhelm the sellers. Over here, there were enough buyers to overwhelm the sellers. Right now, what do we got? We don't have enough buyers to overwhelm the sellers. You see that? You see the difference between them? Now, the buyers are trying to do that. Why? Because there are option contracts sitting up here that they're trying to hit. And then the other guys are going, yeah, but we want the option contract we got down to here. And they're all trying. That's why there's always a battle right here. So, uh, uh, and why can you have a red candle? Because we're showing momentum. We're showing momentum in that candle. All right? The momentum is still to the downside. All right? When the money came in, w once the money flooded in here, in order for this to turn back to normal, it has to have more money coming in than came in to create that move to the downside. And it's not happening yet. There's still more sellers and buyers in here. We're the only ones in the world that we know of who have figured out how, to figure, how that works. All right? So, uh, So on other charts, it's just simply green goes up and red goes down. But in our charts, that's not it. We care more about momentum than the price, although price is king. Price action is king. We care about when we're going to make a trade, we want to trade it when momentum is with us to the downside. Or if we're in an uptrend, momentum is with us to the upside. Right? That's when we want to trade. We don't want to trade when there's not enough momentum. We've all traded when there wasn't enough momentum to push the candle, and when, it, when there's not enough momentum to push the candle, the market has to go find buyers or sellers, which means go the other way. So we're still waiting for this. No hurry in the Forex. It's now been 25 minutes. We're waiting for this trade. It hadn't happened yet. And it may not happen, see? That's why you wait. You've got to learn to wait. It's just hard. I know it's hard, but you've got to learn it. Go with the pound chief, which we've identified. If we can get here, this is a break and a hook. Okay, now this looks totally different. A break and a hook. We're waiting for the go. Are we seeing any go? All right, here's what happened. Right here, right here, the buyers have now overwhelmed the sellers. Not to the point to get all the way up here because it hasn't turned bright green yet, but they've overwhelmed the sellers that were here already. All right, so that's actually good for us. Because what's going to happen is if the sellers come back in, we're going to see this again to the downside, which will give us a really good clue that we should make the sell there. Right. Yeah, I do want to get up. Pip. So let's run down here real quick, and I'm going to open up. We're going to do pip captures only. I'm not answering any questions on anything other than pip captures from yesterday. All right. So uh, let's see what we've got here. Session recap. Let me take it up here. All right. That was this morning. Pound New Zealand, we're good. Uh, actually, Pound New Zealand was one, but we'll, we'll keep going here. New New Zealand, nothing. Uh, Pound Aussie, uh, New Zealand dollar. Okay, hold on real quick. I don't want to miss a trade, so here we go. Okay, now, all right, we're out. Is that what do we do now, Daryl? Nothing. Nothing yet. We have broken out. We've taken out the top. What do we got to have? A break, hook, and go. See? Break, hook, and go. So we take it down to the 10-minute chart. Wait for the hook back down. It's got to come down here at 82.50. It's 80.74. If it runs up here, there's only 12 pips left to the target. Nothing I can do about that. Wait for it to come back to 82.50. If it does, we take the trade back up to 82.89. Uh, See, that's it. All right. So keep an eye on that. All right. So over here, the, the GJ, all right, uh, we were waiting for the trade to downside. Never happened. All right. EJ, last night, same thing. Waiting for the trade to downside. Never happened. All right. Aussie dollar, however, was a trade. The trade was also an IC alert. How many made the, IC, the uh, Aussie dollar trade from 89 to 30 up? All right. Pip captures only. That's the only thing I'm going to do. Pip captures. How many made the Aussie trade? 
Uh, John 30, okay, uh, Peter 43, Demetrius 63, Jerry 45, uh, Bill, uh, oh, that's, uh, I don't need a pound New Zealand, Bill. People don't pay attention. I ask for the Aussie and somebody gives me the pound New Zealand. Pay attention, Aussie. 30, 37, 48, 43, 45, okay, anybody else? All right. All right. Let's take Harold's 37. What do you think? Is that good? Harold's 37, it's right in the middle there. Okay, good. All right, nice job, everybody. All right, dollar yen. Uh, all right, dollar yen. We're waiting for the move to the downside. Did not happen. Swissy, nothing on that thing, as you know. CAD, nothing on that. Pound, okay, pound, let's check it out. Nothing, we haven't broken through the bottom yet. Euro has not moved in three days until this Monday this morning. Nothing there. All right, over to the Aussie yen. All right, Aussie yen, there was nothing. It's now broken out. There's no room for us to trade it, so we're going to walk away from it. All right, EJ, okay, the EJ has just started. It's the one we were looking for yesterday, just started. We're going to keep an eye on the EJ. All right, to the upside. Once we get the pullback, just like the New Zealand, all right, all right. Pound New Zealand's going. All right, well, there's nothing for you. The Pound New Zealand's going. You guys make the decision. You're going to make the trade, all right? I, I've already made the decision, all right? All right. Euro Aussie, uh, nothing there. All right. Cad yen, and it's just popped way, way up there. Nothing there. And pound chief, uh, uh, pound chief. Uh, that just happened this morning. We won't count that because that was a fundy. All right. But that was part of the deal. All right. But the pound Aussie was a it was an info center alert for here to here. How many made the pound Aussie trade? What are the captures on that? I know a bunch of you made it, so come on. It was also an info center alert. 76 for Cameron, 81 for John Robert, 100 for Kevin, Matt 60. Nice job, Matt. Okay. Anybody else? Bill 82. Nice, Bill. George 90 and 65. Way to press your winners, George. 62 for Greg. 420 since Tuesday, Ralph. Well, we know you. You're a good. You really are great at right? hanging on to him, Ralph. Thanks. <laughs> Elaine 75. Robin 65. Jim 4. Okay, Jim. Yeah, you see, you missed an opportunity there. <laughs> All right, Jerry 60, okay, so it looks like right now we could probably call Jerry six, George A 65 would probably be good. All right, George A 65, does that work for everybody on the, G, on the GA? Okay, all right. Uh, okay, thank you, Andrew. All right, good. All right, keep going here. Uh, nothing on the year in New Zealand. We're almost due here, Pound New Zealand here. Pound New Zealand is the one we're waiting for right now, all right. And NJ, uh, we're, we're in a breakup. Nothing to do. We're close to this part where we can trade it, though, folks. Eight and Ace, uh, uh, Ozzy, uh, Swissy. Nothing. Uh, that was the move to the upside. Okay. How many took the Ozzy Swissy yesterday? All right. To the upside after the pullback. All right. Ozzy Swissy to the upside. Wasn't very big. All right. Ozzy Swissy pip captured only. Nobody. Wow. Okay, we can't count it. So that's it. All right. So that's it, folks. Uh, what should be the stop on the pound is in the last supporter resistance plus five to seven pips on a number that ends in a three or a seven, y'all. Go find it, and I'll tell you whether you got it right or not. See, I don't give stuff out. I make you do the work. Ask him what the stop is. Is it's okay to ask the stop, but I'm not going to give you the answer. I'm going to make you go find the answer because that's how a mentor does it. A mentor doesn't give you it. He makes you go find it so you can do it yourself. Last supporter resistance plus five to seven pips on an odd number three or seven. Go tell me what it is, and I'll tell you whether it's right or not. All right. So there we go. We're underway. Town New Zealand. Yeah. All right. All right. So everybody knows what to do. We've already done this whole thing. All right. So I'm waiting for Shaw to tell me what the stop is. Shaw. Waiting for you, bud. Can't move the chart till you do it. Says I'm. I'm sitting here waiting to tell you whether you got it right or not. All right. 
And you think, well, he's being nasty to him. No, I'm being a good, I'm being a good mentor. All right, 9852. Okay, now, first thing that's wrong with that is you can't have a stop. It's on an even number, y'all. So right away, you know that that's wrong. 9852 can't possibly yet. It has to end in a 3 or a 7. That's number one. All right. All right. Now, there's two. There's actually two of them at this point. A safe one is 9853, uh, 57 up here. All right. That's above this line right here at 57. All right. That's the first one. But this helps us. See, this is why we want to wait for that because that's now the new uh, resistance. So we've got to be three, uh, five, five to seven pips above that. That's 59. Add five to it, it becomes 64. All right. And go to an odd, odd number three or seven, 67. So it's 97, 67. Right? That's one of the reasons we like pullbacks, because pullbacks like this give us better stops. See that? So the safe stop is way up here, but the technical stop is still available to be used here for us. All right? That's a nice tight stop for that trade. All right? So good job, Shaw. All right. Thank you. All right. What else are we waiting for? New Zealand yen. All right. So that trade's underway. Uh, we're now up near where we can get into this area here, right? We've taken out the top. We've done all that. We've got to be above here, right? And we're close to that, 84.40. We've got to be above 84.40. We're right there. <clears throat> Let's take this down to 60. You can see, where did they go? Uh, gee, I wonder if they knew where the target was. What do you think? Doggone that Scott. He's so lucky. He found the target before they ever went there, and it went right to the target. Surprise, surprise. Uh, that's how you do it, folks. That's why we're target traders. We know that's where they're trying to go with a high degree of possibility. All right? So there it is. It's just been taken out. All right? So we're going we're gonna to dash it now. It's no longer a target. It's still a barrier, but it's no longer a target. Our next target is way up here. What are we going to have? I have to have a break, hook, and go All right? up above there. So what do we got? Break, hook, and go. Above 80, the best place to take it is above 84.50. Target is 85.38. All right. Now the New Zealand yen's ATR is 123 pips. So how far has it gone? 83.20. It's gone 120 pips. All right. So it's already done 120 pips. So that may be the end of it. That's why you got to know what the ATR is. Right. It's already gone 120 pips, which is its average true range. So we may get it because that's an average. All right. So all right. So there we go. Pound chief while we're waiting. Yeah, we can open it up for candles. And check. We're waiting for the sell. Will we get it? I don't know. We'll get it on the pound chief. All right. And we found nothing on there. Um, uh, that's a secret, Jack. That's why we've been able to do it. I have a, very, a partner who's a very, very smart guy. He's figured out how to do it behind the scenes because there is no volume. You're exactly correct. There is no place to do it. So you can't measure volume. You can only measure momentum. See? So that's it. And I don't, we don't use one broker's feed. When you're using a broker's feed, what you're using is his feed, which means his volume. All right? Uh, I can tell you that because we, can, we have an FX, FXCM feed here. And I can put it on right here, and you'll see the difference in the feed because they're only using their own. All right? Watch the candles change. Not, not too much difference today. Sometimes there's 29 pips difference. All right, so, but that's why. If you're using one broker, that's all you got is one broker. We use an aggregate feed, multiple, multiple, multiple brokers. All right, so we get an aggregate. It's an average of what the feed is. All right, waiting for the turn down. I really want this pound chief trade, folks. All right. This is what we call equilibrium, right? Right here. This is equal. It looks like an EKG. You see that? EKG, equilibrium. It's come back to equilibrium. It's now got to make a decision. It's either going to come up here, in which case it's a big sideways move, which means it's not going anywhere. But if it doesn't do that and it pops to the downside, we're underway with a big momentum trade to the downside. I really want this trade. I really want this trade bad. So we'll see. Now that it's pulled back up. Now, see, this is why I, the other reason we want to wait for this, this is because when it turns, this becomes my last resistance. I go five to seven pips above here. Find an odd number seven. It's 4707. This is my risk. This is my reward. Does anybody like those odds right there? All right. See that? There you go. 
target in the pound New Zealand. Uh, you know, guys have got to pay attention because I don't ever give it without giving you a target. All right, it's 96.55. All right, I probably said that 25 times this morning. 96.55. All right. I know we actually worked out how we're going to go, where we're going to double our, our account, double our position on the way down. We've done all that. But what happens is traders don't pay attention. All right. So, uh, pound, uh, okay, pound yen. Right. Now, first of all, we are in a downtrend. All right. Do we have an uptrend? All right. I'm going to answer uh, the question about the pound yen. All right. Can we buy on the pound yen? I'm on. Do we have an uptrend? No. We have a sideways move. Are we in a downtrend? Yes. So the preferred trade is to the downside. All right. See that? Only advanced traders could trade that. How would you know that you could trade it? You've doubled and tripled your account. If you've doubled and tripled your account, you could probably trade that. If you've never done that, you can't trade that. We're not going to trade that in here because right now we've got about 1,250 newbies in here. All right. I'm not going to trade that, right. but that's the answer. The answer to every question is this, what's my risk? Every question you can ask in the Forex is answered by one thing, what is my risk? Your risk is you don't have the skill to trade, to trade counter trade. Only 20% of the money is made counter trade. All right. The risk is this is a correction. They found the top to find the sellers and they're going to the downside. There's too much risk to trade counter trend unless you have the skill level to do it. All right. So uh, so there we go. Uh, no, she's moderating the room, Rich. So we keep this down because when we open it up, there's 55 questions and we end up not catching the trades. We've learned this with this group. It's different from every group, but this group is one who says they don't care. They just want to ask questions. They don't want to learn. They just want to, they want to ask questions. They want to learn. So we're, we're moderating this on purpose to keep it at a pace that we can answer questions and show that. When we get a question, that's good, we're going to answer it. So this is a good question. Can I trade the pound yen now? The answer is no. All right. Can you trade the pound New Zealand now? All right. The answer to that is yes. All right. We now have uh, a, white, a white dot showing right here. All right. We're going to watch this white dot. If it prints, we're going to pop a 55 pip target. Because what happens with the big boys is they, they go 55 pips, 55 pips, and when they go 55 pips, they exit one half of their position, put it in the bank, and move their stop to break even. Now, they can't lose, and they put a half of, the, half of it in the bank. Well, that doesn't sound like much, except you've got to realize that the average bank is trading 20,000 lots for 55 pips. So he had a pretty nice payday, and he's riskless from here on. Uh, so that's the answer to that. Okay, uh, do you have time to show us how to draw as an? Uh, yeah, we will if we get. Well, we, we got some trades on. I don't want to miss these trades, folks. You know, we have a live trade on in the room. Let's watch the live trade. We haven't had one all week. We missed it on Monday. It was so crazy with questions that we couldn't even trade one. Now we got one. And everybody still wants to ask questions, all right? But learning how to how to decide that that was the trade to take is the key here. What did it do, all right? Wide open space sets it up, number one. Number two, takes out the support. Number three, break, hook, and go. All right. Next, we got a white dot saying we got big boys trying to push this. All right. If they push it, we're going 55 pips if that dot will print. It hasn't printed yet. All right. How much time we got? We got another five and a half minutes before it prints. But if it does, we're going 55 pips to the downside. All right. All right, that's a probability. That's not an absolute. It's a probability. Everything in the forex is, is statistical probability. All right. So uh, if we do have to, if we do have a chance to do, uh, I will do them. Don't get me wrong. I will do them today. All right. I just don't want to miss this opportunity to walk you through a trade. We're in a trade. We're in a live trade, and we don't. And everyone wants to know how to do something different. All right. So let's watch this trade, folks. And. Understand what we're going to do. All right, we're at 23 right now. All right, when we get down here to 97.06, which is the first barrier and bounce point, you move your stop to break even. Wherever you got in, it's at the 97.06. All right, when you hit the 97, you move it down to be representative. Of that six more pips. All right, just hold and you sit. Don't be in a hurry to move it. All right, it could flop around here and then finally go, or it could break. But if it breaks 9700, break, hook, and go again. That's your second trade. You're going to double your position down to 96.55. As you approach 96.55, you do not limit out. You move your stop because your next target is 96.13. That's how you do it. All right.
And if you break below 96.50, you're going to double your position again. So we got one down here, and we got another one down here. All right. Now, will we win on this trade? I don't know if we'll win on this trade. I never know. But we wait for a high probability setup. If it comes, we take it. If it doesn't, be patient and walk away. All right. So now, to explain that, we can go on. All right. Go ahead and uh, open it up, Pip, and we'll answer a couple of more questions here. So. Normally, we don't have 1,500, 2,000 people in a room, all right? No, I never do, Jack. I'm not an indicator junkie. I, don't, I use price action. We use indicators for what they're good for. They're good to keep us confidence, all right? Uh, it's not 120 pip stop, Rich. Pound New Zealand. All right. Pound New Zealand is a stop at 97.67. 97.67 is a stop. 97.67, there's your thing. Add 5 to 7 fifths, it's 59. Add 5 to that, it's 50, 64. I've got to go to an even, even number 3 or 7. It's 67. That's it. All right, so here's my risk. Right here, here's my reward. You can see it. I, I don't have to go figure out the numbers. I can see the number right there. Is that a good trade? That's 1 to 3. All right, that's 1 to 3. It's a no-brainer trade. Will it work? I don't know. I don't have a clue. We'll see. You have to be a subscriber, Maurice. Our live room subscribers get them automatically. Right. That uh, the entry point. Well, we talked about the entry point for 20 minutes. Uh, every day you must have been asleep for 20 minutes. We sit here and talked about the entry right here for 20 minutes. I don't know how you missed it, but for 20 minutes we talked about it. All right. right there. We need a break, hook, and go. When the go happens, which is the candle to the downside, that's the entry. All right. It's not a trade. The trade setup was here from the very beginning. It was not a trade until that candle pushed on through. All right. That's that's the problem. Here's what happens to trade. First of all, they're not paying attention in the in when it was happening. All right. They're not paying any attention at all. They want something to tell them why they need to get in. There isn't anything. Give that thing up. You've got to learn how to watch the market. You got to deal with the real estate of the day. There are at least a thousand different versions of a break, hook, and go. All right, how are you going to see them? You got to go practice them. You go in the past, look at thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of break, hook, and goes, and then you'll eventually see you'll see them. This is a visual business, folks. It's visual, right? It's what we call reticular cognition. Reticular means you uh, you can see it. Cognition means I understand it. I have cognitive power of what I'm seeing. Reticular cognition part of all trading, all right? It is not natural. It has to be developed, all right? Uh, let's see, Austin, uh, do we keep trades overnight? We keep trades as long as the trade is working, all right? And we never exit trades. We move or stop, all right? We move or stop. Don't ever exit a trade. It could be a win in trade, even though right now it's not. It could be a win in trade. Never exit a trade unless you absolutely know it's wrong. All right. If this comes up here and keeps coming up, keeps coming up, go. Eh, it's wrong. I'm not going to get it. Then we take it out. The only thing we take a trade out is if it's wrong. But we don't ever take a trade out if it's working and it's going right. You move your stop. Put the money in the bank by moving your stop. Right. You'll never get you'll never get 2,100 pips like uh, Andrew did this week right, on one currency if you exit your trade. So. Uh, no, we don't use a pitchfork. We use a channel key. Uh, we don't use the pitchfork. Right. Uh, okay, we're done with that. Huh. Now, you can see what's happening here. We're getting another break, hook, and go. See that? Another break, hook. All right, on the go, all right, those who have missed the first one, you can take the second one. All right, again, the stop has not changed any. It's right here. All right. The risk, that's your risk, that's your reward. It's a one to three opportunity. The decision to make the trade is because we have a one to three opportunity, not because we have a trade set up. We do have a trade set up, but now we have a trade. Will we win on this trade? I don't know. This thing can go right back up and take you out. What can I tell you? It's 21 pips from taking you out right now. All right? That's called trading, folks. Nobody knows. There is no crystal ball here. I don't have a crystal ball. I am not, uh, not somebody who's clairvoyant. I'm not a prognosticator. 
here's what I am. I read charts. When the charts tell me to sell and buy, I buy and sell. That's it. That's all I do. There's no rocket science here. There's no guru crap. None of that stuff. It's pure and simple. Understand the market. Learn how the market moves. How long does that take? Months. If you apply yourself. If you don't apply yourself, you won't become a trader. So there you go. Pip's got it. We trade based on high probability, based on the preponderance of evidence in the charts, with no guarantee that that's even right at all. all right? But we get it right more than we get it wrong, and that's why you become a winning trader. There's no we have losses. We've had six losses already this year. All right? Six losses already. Now you guys say, "Wow, that's six losses this week." No, we've had six losses since January. All right? January first. We don't have any losses, but we do have losses. All right. All right. I'm still scanning charts for opportunities, scanning charts for opportunities, scanning charts for opportunities. Uh, hmm, Ozzy, nothing yet. I'm interested in that Ozzy, though. To the upside right there. Finish that trade off. Hadn't gone anywhere. Uh, well, the, okay, here's another question, right? Here's the question from just uh, was just asked. Do we stay in trades from last night? Okay, here's a trade we made yesterday. All right, all the traders should still be in this trade. Why? Right? Our overall target is up here. All right, so when we got to here. Most traders, advanced traders, are at break even or maybe plus five. They're sitting right here like this. Why? Because it's a two part trade right here, and they want to be in position. All right, so they've been in this all night, and they're still in here waiting for the next push to the upside. All right, now. How long can we stay in the trade? As long as it doesn't come back against us, we're still in this trade with the opportunity. Right? We still have the opportunity. They're telling you right now there are no sellers. Therefore, there are only buyers. So when the buyers get interested, up to our target we go. When we get close to that, we move our stop. Maybe it'll bounce up and go to the R5. But if it doesn't and pulls back, we got it all. How long will that take? I don't know. Four hours? Six hours? Twelve hours? Twenty-two hours? I don't know. But how long can I stay in a trade that I can't lose on? I can't lose on the trade. I've got my stop at least to break even. All right. That's it. All right. Uh, nothing on the yen yet. Nothing on the Swissy yet. Nothing on Swissy. The problem with the Swissy, I like the Swissy. The problem is it's it's done its ATR. All right. See, I like this ATR. See, this is what you look for. You look for target the trades that are set up to go. That's a pennant. All right. In a down move, in a downtrend. Which way does a pennant in a downtrend and a down move move? To the downside. What's it just done? Broken down below the pennant. It's doing what I need it to do. What do I need it to do? Take the support out and I'll trade it down in here. What's the problem? Doing all that ate up all of its ATR. All right? The ATR for the dollar Swissy is 71 pips. All right? This started up here at 90.62. We're now at 89.91, which is exactly 70 pips. It's done its ATR. See? That. So can it go here? It can go. And if it goes here, I will take this trade. All right? Because the chart has already told me this is what we're trying to do. The problem is it probably isn't going to happen in this session. I may get this on this session, but it isn't going to finish in this session because the ATR has already been done. It's 69 pips on the ATR. Thank you, Pip. See? Everybody understanding that? You've got to understand what your opportunity is. What, your, what the preponderance of evidence tells you and whether that's even a reality today. See? The reality is it could happen, but it's less of a probability than other things. I'll keep my eye on it. I will watch for it. If it happens, I will take it. All right? But I'm not expecting it to because although it's done all it needs to do, it's also exceeded what it normally moves in a day. All right? So the traders who have made the profit, the guys who made this move have already made their profit. And they're the, they're the ones who do it every day. The same traders are trading the Swissy every day. That's why they end up with personalities. All right. All right. The Dollar CAD, we had the announcement, and look at it, did. You know, blah, junk. All right. So nothing. We didn't make a trade there, and we were then now we're showing that we're smart not to do that. Euro. All right. Euro has finally moved. Three days it sat there and went 12 pips. All right. Do I rest my case about the euro? I rest my case about the euro. If you don't think the euro is a piece of crap, all you had to do is be here the first three days of this month, of, of this week. All right. Has silver moved yet? That's uh, pulled back. That's a good sign because now we got profit up to the target. So we want we want this pullback here. And now if you get a bounce, you want to trade it up to 2033. Right. What are they doing with the dollars? All right. Uh, let's go check it out. They're still selling dollars, folks. Still selling dollars. All right. That means the euro should go, the Aussie should go, the pound should go to the upside. All right. 
So Ozzy Yen, looking to see, we have a breakout here. Our problem is we have a breakout here. We do not have a trend to the upside, and we don't have any room up here until we get up into here. So there's nothing for us to do in the Aussie Yen. It also needs to build structure. It has to put a bottom in here somewhere so we can get a trend on here, which we don't have yet. So it needs to come down and do that. Once it does that, then we're in position to do that. All right? So there's no trade on the Aussie Yen. Never go in the market looking for a trade. Always go in the market looking for a structure. Once you find the structure, you'll find the trade. Your pound. All right, we're waiting for the pullback. Aha, we got it. Man, come on, a little deeper. Almost got all the way back down here. I'd like to see it come down a little lower here. Let's see if it comes down here and then see if it'll get some push. All right, you can see there's no push here. All right? You got a push up here, and now what do you got? Nothing. Little dinky candles. There's no momentum in these at all, and they're falling to the downside. Why? Because professional buyers won't buy at the top. Professional buyers will buy at the bottom. So what do we do? We wait for it to get down to the bottom. If we get that to the bottom and we see momentum come in to drive it again, like that looks right there, we want to trade it to there. All right? What do we got to do? We got to wait for that to happen. On every currency that you trade, you got to deal with the real estate you're given today, how that plays into what you're trying to do, and then you got to wait for it to do it. So you got to pre-anticipate the market. Then you got to put a plan together that says if you do a B, C, and D, then I'll trade you. But if you don't do any one of those, I'm not going to mess with you at all. all right? And not one of those is an indicator. And if my, if my RBI turns over and my slow stochastic is 20% overbought, and then I will definitely be making this trip. None of that stuff. Learn to trade. All right? Nothing wrong with indicators. Just don't trade them. Use them for confidence. Use them to feed you information. Don't trade them. All right. Your Aussie, if we get the sell back to the downside, we've had a nice correction on the fundy, okay? So the correction has helped us because we were trying to go down. So the, this correction of the upside gives us a great opportunity to sell it if it'll do that. All right. If it buys, can we trade it? No, because we're looking for an ABC if it buys. All right. Structure says you've got to do an ABC. All right. Does it done that? No. All right. Yesterday we were trading the pole. We did pretty well in this year, Ozzy, yesterday. And uh, you know what? We didn't get the didn't get the um, the pip capture. So everybody give me your pip capture on the Euro Aussie. I didn't take that one for some reason. Euro Aussie, what was your pip capture? Just pip capture only now. Uh, so what did Jay do? Oh, yeah, Joe, 134 pips. Nice job, Joe. Carlos, 54 and 66, okay? Patty, if you were here yesterday, we discussed it. I'll, I'll help you in a minute. Let me get this down. We've got 43 for Trish. Nice job, Trish. Woohoo! New trader, 43 pips. Nice work. Liz, 90. Phil, 175. Nice way to press your winners, boys. Alan, lost money, stopped out. Okay, Alan. Charles, not Charles. Way to go, Charles. Way to go, Charles. Man, I am so proud of you. Look what you did. You nailed that sucker, buddy. All right, we're going to play a song for you. That ain't right. working, way to go. That's the way you do it. Money for nothing and your chicks for free. Money for nothing. Chicks for free. All right, nice work. All right, so as we look down here, it looks like we could take uh, an average probably of, uh, gosh, I don't know. You want to take Carl 77? What do you think? Carl 77 work? That's about right in the middle. All right, so I'm going to take Carl 77. Nice work, everybody. Yeah, good job. Okay. Uh, okay, Roger, time to change your broker. <laughs> right? All right, so... Uh, uh, let's see, questions I got, will your method work for, for uh, yeah, it'll work for anything. The problem you got with those things though, Bob, is you got gaps, and that's the big problem with stocks, is gaps, all right, uh, and futures, yeah, sure, you know, it's all about finding a target, I mean, futures, where's it going to go, right, so it works great for futures. Stocks, you got a problem because of gaps, all right, so, uh, we don't have gaps in the forex except on the weekends, all right? Oh, for Patty, what's the pole? Okay, the pole, let me show you an upside one, Patty, okay? The pole is this. It's a flag, all right? 
when you have this, this is the pole right here, the pole, pole, and this is the flag part, okay? All right. Now, the statistical probability is whatever the pole is, all right, right here, is what the currency will do when it comes out. All right. So that's what happens here. We did this yesterday. We measured from here down here. Now, this is an upside down pole. See, here's the pole like this. See that, Patty? It's upside down. So whatever it did here is what it's going to try to do here. All right. And that, that was this target we already put up in here. What happened? We were underway. And guys made a lot. As you can see, they made an average of 77 pips doing that. And what ended up happening? We had a fundamental announcement this morning that rocked it the other way. And that's the problem with fundies. Fundies are a pain. I hate fundies, but they're part of the deal. All right? You have to know they're there. And if you're in this trade, you exit your trade and get flat. All right? You get flat. So you protect all that profit right there. See, when you protect your profit, then if it gets a funny that rocks it the other way, you put all your money in the bank, nothing to do with it. So getting flat is the only other time we will exit a trade. Well, there is one other time, but we don't have time to talk about it here. But the major thing is before every fundy, get flat. Flat means out of the market, sitting on the sidelines on your hand. When do you know a trade is not working? Do you wait for your position? No, I don't, uh, Larry. It's not, it, your job is not, not to let the market tell you you're wrong. Your job is to figure out you're wrong. All right? When you figure out you're wrong, all right, then you go and say, okay, I'm wrong, and then you have the strength and the discipline to go reach over there and click it for a loss because you're wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. All right? So I can, I can take 23 pips right now and admit I'm wrong, or I can hope and pray that it turns around and take a 42 pip loss because I want to prove my ego. And get rid of your ego. All right, losses are part of the deal. You can't get it right every time. So, uh, well, Jim and our own group, uh, when we're here, we're over here. We're guests of Morgan, by the way, this week. And we sure want to thank Morgan for the opportunity to come here. We, we, we like you guys. We love Morgan. We love uh, the Winter's Edge people also. But uh, Morgan is a great guy. And, uh, yeah, and um, he's, he does a lot for traders, as you know. And uh, he's all about making you guys successful. I mean, his, his business, Trading Hub, is about a pub is about trying to make traders successful. All right? There are good guys in this business. Morgan is one of them. We are another one. All right? There are some real nasty people also. We're not them. All right? So uh, you know, it's like any business. There are good guys and bad guys. We're the good guys. All right. So uh, this is leading up, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow we'll have a great opportunity for all of you guys who are saying, man, this looks like this is the opportunity for me. This is where I want to head. And one of the reasons that we do things like this is let you come in because we don't want to hype you. We don't want to sit there and try to sell you a bunch of junk and here's another robot and, oh, by the way, why don't you buy my ebook and all that kind of stuff. That's not what we do here. We bring you in here. You get to see what we do day in and day out. You get to watch our traders. You're watching our traders cranking pips. And you go, this really works. These people really do make pips, and they're not making five to eight. They're making a bunch of pips. Do I want to learn how to do that? And if you do, there will be an opportunity for you tomorrow. So you don't want to miss tomorrow. You want to be here tomorrow. All right. So uh, that's a good question, Larry, by the way. Now, when, when do you know when a trade's not working? And we have, you know, most of the time our trades that don't work are in the British pound. They're, it's a real, they're, they're, Testy little suckers. Speaking of the British pound, let's go see what our little trade has done. Nothing yet. All right, all right. Come all the way back up. Still doing it. Still testing this move to the downside. So we don't freak out. We're not, not in a hurry. Don't ever be in a hurry to move your stop in the beginning. It could, could flop around like this for quite a while, and then all of a sudden just take off and go. So that's what we do. We're sitting here waiting. All right. So sitting there. Well, we went on a straight. I don't know. We may take a loss on this trade. If you thought you come in here and go, these guys are never going to lose, that's not the case either. We lose. That's just it. We do lose. Right? But we don't lose very often. Right? And when we do make money, we teach people how to press their winners, how to find the areas where you can do that and make a whole lot more than five-day pips, which is the average trader. Let me prove something to you real quick while we've got this little, uh, little lag time here waiting for the market. I want to bring this up to you. It's going to take me a second. All right? And... Uh, Pull this up for you guys to see. There's a little spreadsheet. I want to prove to you why you cannot be successful if you keep scalping for five-day pips. All right? A little spreadsheet here. You can see I have stop set at 30 pips. Now, that's just an average. It could be 37. It could be 26. It could be 41. Every trade is different. But on average, around 30 pips is the trade for the uh, average retail trader is a stop. 
All right? The average retail trader only does five to eight pips. All right? That's all they do. All right? Five to eight pips. And other than here, you can see that if you make 100 trades, you are going to have to be right 90% of the time to have any increase in your money. 90% of the time. What are the odds of you being right 90 out of 100 times for the rest of your life? What are the odds of that? Slim. The only way you can do that is if you are the greatest trader on the planet. And I don't think you are. All right? Now, we're just going to change this, and we're going to make this a one-to-one -one opportunity. All right? 30 pips stop, 30 pip opportunity, and, and we do get 30 pips. All right? We make 100 trades. We win on 50. We lose on a, a 50. That means we break even, and we only have to be 50% right, which means that 30, one to one, we can trade. We can be 51% uh, correct and have an increase in our margin account. But as you know, we're never looking for 30 pips. We're looking for 55 or more. So let's change this to 55 pips. All right? At 55 pips, all right, you can see we only have to be 40% right. We can lose 60 <clears throat> out of 100 trades and still be profitable. But look at what happens to your uh, money when you increase your skill level from 40% just to 50%. Let's just take a mini account here. All right? you, a mini account, you jump your account from 40 to $125 uh, or a in your account just by increasing your skill level. When you increase your skill level up to the 70, 80% area, which is where you got to be, you're going to be up in here. Now you can make money for the rest of your life. It's just a numbers game, folks. So you cannot be successful unless you learn to trade for bigger pips. And the only way to know that the bigger pips are available is to find the wide open spaces where they are sitting there waiting for you to ha take them. So there you go. All right. That should be pretty doggone clear. <clears throat> All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, Uh, there we go. Okay, you can open it up, Pip. I'm going to try to find a currency to redo. I might do that British pound because it has re it has moved. Eh, not really. I'm going to leave it. Uh, Mark, does it make a difference if the channel is drawn first at support or resistance? Uh, if you're going up, you have to do it on the support. If you're going down, you have to do it on the resistance, Mark. Depends on the direction. Exactly. Good question, though, by the way. Uh, nice job. All right. Uh, uh, do you take the close of the higher low for your trend channel? No, we take what the market shows us. All right? it's not, it's not, it is going to be a higher low, but it's going to be what the market shows us, and we only care about the last piece. All right? So if you were here on Friday, on Monday night, we did a class on trends. All right? So uh, that class is uh, Morgan has it. If you want to go review that, that'll help you out. It take me it took you know 30, 40 minutes to talk about it there. I don't want to take 34 minutes to talk about it here, but you can. Uh, it is part of the archives of this week. So, uh, Scott, how do you define the height of the hook? I don't. I look at it. It's a visual, Scott. There's a thousand of them. There's a thousand different versions. One could be 20 pips. One could be three. I mean, it's, it's you got to go. Here's the deal, Scott. You have to go watch a thousand, two, three thousand break hook and goes for you to see it. You're not going to see it with three, right? And then you'll find out that there's a thousand different versions, but as you watch them, you'll go, that's a break hook and 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 go. You start to see them, and then you never have to do it anymore because you have reticular cognition. You understand the break hook and go without having to cognitive, uh, have to, having to actually think about what it is, okay? So, uh, okay, Andrew has uh, sent me an email with, with uh, some live accounts. So, you know, that's what I always have people go, well, well, you don't see anything live here. Well, you know, we're here for traders. So it's our traders record that counts, not our, our record. What I trade is irrelevant, irrelevant compared to what you guys can do. Uh, Deborah, we, we care about them on the two, on all the big charts, uh, 240 and the 60. When we're doing a roadmap, we're looking at a 60, but we will use them on a 10 or a 50. They, they're, on a, they're, there are multiple ways to use FIBs. We're using FIB extensions and everything else. So, uh, you know, you actually have to learn the FIBs are a big, big lesson, all right? When I decided to learn FIBs, I want to learn it from a FIB master. So I called a FIB master up. This is in the old days, okay? So in the old days, I called a FIB master. I said, I want to learn FIBs. He said, great, come on down. I said, how much are you going to cost me? He said, $3,500. I said, good. How much time will you give me? He said, I'll give you three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. And I went down, spent the $3,500, the best $3,500 I ever spent. Uh, so good question. I'm waiting for this uh, email to come up. Uh, 
necessarily it's kind of off him, but do you have a preference between five or six day week six day week brokers with MD four? Five and you'd only trade them four Len. We would we we don't ever trade on Friday. We're gonna do it tomorrow because it's the end of the week with you guys. We want to spend a little more time with you guys. But uh we we never trade Friday, basically. We don't even close, open our room on Friday. So uh and uh hold on just a minute. All right. So there's a Andrew a live account. He's showing you uh, uh, what what he's doing. I want you to see that. All right. So that you don't think you know, Andrew's not. No, no. Just a minute. Where is that there? There we go. All right. So there's Andrew. Uh, account. These are live trades he's got on right now. You can see right there. So there you go. All right. So you can see over here, Andrew's got you know he's trading. He's trading small sizes. All right. But and he's building positions. Okay. It's very important to build a position. All right. You can see he's building positions in the pound yen. He and that he's just starting on the pound dollar. See that? That's why it's upside down. He just started on that on that pound dollar. All right. See that? All right. Building position. So this is Andrew. He's in the room right now. He's showing you his account. So you can see that. All right? Now, I, I want to show you about building positions. One of the things we teach is how to do that, how to build a position. Here's another one of our traders. He's rarely in here anymore because he's a professional trader. But uh, I want to show you this. All right. This is Frankie. Frankie, one of our traders, and he sent this to me. He said, "You're welcome to use it." Seven thousand pips still in building possessions. He loves to trade the yens. He trades all the yen crosses. He majors in the yen crosses. You can see, never has any real big money at risk at any time. There's three minis, no more than that at any time. And you can see how long he's in trades. He was "How long do you stay in trades? As long as it'll go your way, all right? It'll come up." Right? Days, twenty-one days, twenty days, eight point six, fourteen four. See that? Nine point two. All in the CAD because he loves to trade the CAD. Very minimal risk, three minis at any given time. But if you build positions, okay, look at the pips. You know, look at the pips he's got. 547, 535, 428, 419, 347, 329, 325, 291, 288, 239. 7,000 pips and still in profit. See? That's how you want it. That's how you make money, folks. All right? Now, if you do that every month, you do... Just fine, you know. You'll do just fine. <laughs> so we'll let it turn. I'm gonna wait for it to change over for you guys. There we go. It's refreshing. There we go. Right. So it's got room. It's lagging. Okay. So tech support. We got. Uh, we have a full-time tech support person in here, by the way, today because of yesterday. So. Uh, uh, you can see tech support. We're having trouble. All of a sudden, we've lagged. It popped up. So, uh, yes, we do allow it in our own room, Jim. It's not allowed in here uh, because we have too many people. So there we go. Uh, but in our room, we do. So we're over here with Morgan. And try to drop in projection. Start again. Okay. Try it again. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's a good thing to know right there. Thank you, Morgan. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, there's Morgan. He put the, the link to the trend video right there. So if you want that trend video from Monday night, uh, go to uh, send that email to trade, support at tradingpub.com, and they'll uh, get you the link for that, okay? So uh, good job. Okay, uh, Al uh, or AJ, uh, pound cad. What do you think? I don't trade the pound cad. It's too. I think it's a little nasty. All right. All right. No, I never trade futures. I you, you, I become an expert in what I do. I want to be an expert in forex. All right. I've been I've been here 12 years, and I'm looking to be here another 12 years. All right. 
Now, I understand the forex. To me, the forex is the only place to be. Right? So, all right. I'm looking for a currency so I can redo it so everybody can see us do it from the start here. So give me a second. And we're looking for one that we can that has reversed and to the point where we can actually make sense out of it yet. And right now I'm not seeing much of anything. So, but I'll tell you what, we'll do, we'll do redo this Swissy. I'm going to take everything off of here. We'll see how we do this. Okay, so we start with a blank chart. Okay, and the first thing we do is we go up to a day chart. Right here we are. We're on a day chart. And we go up in the day chart and we can see, obviously you can see in the big, big picture, we are in a big down chart in the day chart world. This is a one, two, three, four, five. We've had an A, B, C retracement. So what are we in now? A one, two, three, four, five, or is this a one, two, three, four, five up to the top? See, well, so we don't know. See, there we go. So. That's why we don't trade the day chart. It can give us too much information that we don't like. But what we've got to find out is where the top and the bottom is, okay? So we go up here and we go, okay, where is the top? And the preponderance of evidence tells me it's here. See, that top is this bottom, this bottom, this bottom, these bottoms right in here. So that's the top of this move. There are tops above that, but I'm going to slam into this one first. So I change it to pink, all right? So it's my color uh, for day charts. I know what, if it's pink, it came from the day chart, okay? Okay, all right, Pip, uh, I already answered uh, uh, HS Halbers, okay. Uh, oh, the time frame for the ATR, ATR is, uh, uh, is a, um, it's from 5 o'clock yesterday to 5 o'clock today. That's what the ATR is, okay. All right, so, uh, and that's Eastern time, right. So that's it. In a 24 hour period from 5 o'clock New York to 5 o'clock New York is how much, how, what is the average true range? The higher the number, the greater the volatility. The greater the volatility, the greater the mistake, the greater the, the opportunity. The less the, oppor uh, the greater, the less the ATR, the, uh, the less the opportunity, right? Because it can't move to targets as fast or as quickly or uh, as concisely as you want it to do, all right? All right, so I got the top. Now I got to find the bottom, all right? So I got to clone this. And we're waiting for the 10 o'clock bottom. I'm going to bring this down to here, and I'm going to go sideways over here and look and see what it tells me over here. Is this good? Well, it tells me it's a little higher. See that? It tells me it's just a little higher than that. Maybe right in there, right there. Those two bottoms, that top, those bottoms, that top, that bottom, that bottom. Okay, so now I, I've got pretty good confirmation that that's it. And you see, they already used it twice. Here, that's at the head and shoulders, right? So here's a head and shoulders on a day chart trend. There's a neckline up to the upside. Wow, see that? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw that neckline because I need to know that kind of information. My job is to gather the information. I'm looking for the structure of the market right now. That's what I'm looking for. So I can see that neckline right there. I'm going to uh, change it to pink so I know it comes off the day chart. All right. There we go. All right. Now, I go down to the 240 chart. Now, everything is done here for me. All right. This is where we are. We can see we're in a big, big ascending wedge in, in a big picture on the day chart. Yeah, they're areas. They're not uh, finite uh, areas. They're just, uh, you know, in this area, you should look for the top to be done. All right. All right. So uh, now what we care about is the last piece on this, on this chart. All right. So what has the last piece been doing? It was buying in an ABC retracement up to the day chart top. Everybody see that? Structure says this came down. All right. And it was it's a A B C retracement to the day chart top. We got to the top here, and we're now in this move right here. Right? All right, that's that's what we're in right now. So we will be a will be officially a seller down in this area right here. Right? But the day chart is also taking precedence. All right, so I'm going to clone this line. Uh, you see, you got to draw what you see. It's called reticular cognition. All right. Now we see on this line that this could very very well be a head and shoulders to the downside and a big, big swath of area uh, to trade in, right? So the question is, is this an up area or is it a down? And the way I figure that out is the beauty of our charts, right? It's this. I go look and see what these three charts say, right? This one says you're going down. This one says you're going down. This one says you're going down. Then I look up here and say, this one says you're going down. This one says you're going down. This one says you're going down. Now, see, I have two shots at this. This could be going up. Or this could be going down. But what does the chart tell me? The chart says you're going down. So now I know what to do. See? And you know how many times you're going to be confronted with that where you can't figure that out? Well, we have a way to figure that out. All right? 
So we'll now know we're a seller. We're looking to come down into this area right down in here. What does that mean? I need I need Fibonacci uh, targets down in here off the 240 chart. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to get a set of fibs. All right. I'm going to click from the swing top, swing high to the swing low at the 240, and I stop. And when I stop, I go, okay, Mr. Chart, you better show me that you know where these lines are. And if you don't show me you know where these lines are, I got the wrong swing high, swing low. But they, they proved to me instantaneously that they are working these Fibonacci lines. All right. So I now know that I can count on these lines to the downside. All right. So that's really good. I'm good with that. All right. Next stop is PSRs. Hardest thing for traders to get. I need to find my, the, my, my targets to the downside and my targets in case I get this wrong and it bounces to the upside. So I've got to figure them both ways. All right. So if I'm looking for my ceiling in the future, I got to go back in the past and find my floor. All right. So in the past, there's an uptrend. There's a floor right here, right, right here. This is a support that creates that move right there. That, if this bounces to the upside, will be the ceiling. All right. If I break below, above that, I've got to go and see if I have one above here. I can't use this one, although it looks good because it doesn't create the higher low. All right. But I can use this one right here. All right. So I got two here, one right there and one right there. Right, that's two. Now, up in here, there's probably some as we go in the past, we'll go find them. All right. Now, I, now I need to find mine to the downside, especially because I'm interested in the sell to the downside. So I'm going to go back in the past and I'm going to find the resistances because I'm looking for my floor in the, in the future, which means I've got to go find my ceiling in the past. All right. So I'm going in the past looking for my ceiling. All right. And it's got to produce a lower low. So this one right here, right here, this whole move starts right here. And it, uh, actually, not that one. This one right here. That one creates the bottom right here. This one right here creates that bottom right there. So those two will be it. See, this one right here creates that bottom. This one right here creates that bottom. All right. Now, so I'm going to go get those. But these are all below where I, my, my intended bottom is. See, this is my bottom for what I figured out on the 240. So the only one I really got to get is this one and this one right here. And see, I'm already defining the wide open spaces. All right. Now, I keep moving back because I don't know that that's just it. I go back in the past and see, do I have another one? You see, I have one right here that I would have missed if I didn't go back far enough and grab this one right here to the downside. There's another one right here to the downside, right? All right, there we go. And let's go. Oh, there's one right here, but that's is that above? It's above me. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that one. All right. Now, I'm going to see if I have any above me in this big area right up in here. I'm going to an uptrend and see if I have anything in here. And when I go back here to find if I have anything in here, what do I see? They ran it. 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 What does that mean? That means they're going to run it. <laughs> There's nothing here. All right. I don't have to worry about it. There's nothing here. All right. So that's good. If they if they bounce it to the upside, I'm not going to miss that trade right there. All right. Now I now know I'm headed to the downside, and I'm, I've got this is the the first start of the first wave to the downside would be one, two, three, four, and five. All right. So I can put the HSI on one. And I can put the second one on two right here. That's it. All right. HSI starts. The first one is here. I'm measuring the first wave and I'm saying, go find the targets. Go fetch. All right. That's what I'm saying. Go fetch. Go boy. Woo, 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 woo. All right. Notice that they knew exactly where that was. Now we have a pullback, which starts. That's wave one. Wave two is a corrective wave to get it back up to find more sellers. They don't have enough sellers down here. They got to go find the sellers. That's how you create the corrective wave. Now we're in the third wave to the downside. So we'll mark that, find out where that's going. All right. And once we do this, we now know exactly where we will trade. And it becomes very clear. All right. So this target is already out right here. This target is already out right here. So this is the first trade right here. See that? If we get now, there's a mess down in here. Right, which is also the day chart bottom. But should we break that, there's my second trade. All right, now I'm going to open that up. I want to make sure everybody understands it. Does everybody see how easy that is? There's no rocket science there, none whatsoever. All right, And it became very easy to see where we would trade. All right, We now know the only place we will trade. We won't trade unless we're here. We will not. Now you go, somebody says, Man, there's a lot of lines on that chart. Yes, there is. Every place there's a line, I can't trade. But every place there isn't is an opportunity. I have to make the decision whether I want to trade that or not. Oh, now that didn't take that long, folks. Uh, it took what five minutes or so to figure that out. That's it. So that's it. 
Uh, Rich, you didn't understand any of it. Well, you, that's because it's the first time through for you, okay? All right? The first time through. That's how you learn it. You've got to learn. You know, that's the whole point. Right? If you don't, do you not understand Fibonacci's? Or do you not understand previous support or resistance? Do you not understand trends? I mean, are you a brand spanking new beginner? Okay, if you're a brand new spanking new beginner, then you've got to get that information underneath your belt, see? So you'll get an offer tomorrow, AX, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, what do you mean uh, with flat one fundies that some traders take more than 20 days? Well, advanced traders know how to do it, RC, but you as a beginner cannot have to get flat. When I'm in a room here with 1,500 traders, of which, except for my, my traders who are with me every day, everybody else is a newbie, everybody gets flat, all right? But we teach people how to stay in over a fundy. Uh, we don't have time to do it here. In fact, we won't do it here because it's advanced, okay? But if you're a, a newbie, if, you've never, if you're not doubling and tripling your account during a year, then you're a newbie, and you've got to get flat. You have too much risk, and you don't have the skill level or education to stay in. All right? But as you gain that, you will learn how to do that. All right? uh, I don't factor in the spread. That's why we do the five to seven pips, Vita. We do five to seven pips above the, uh, the uh, sport of resistance, which takes in the spread. Uh, and then we got to find an odd number three or seven, which usually makes it even wider. Okay, so, uh, well, Rich, uh, we, you, you can ask questions right now. That's all we open up for questions right now. It's open up for questions. Ask your question. What's your question now? We'll answer it. All right. When I'm going through it, it'll take 40 minutes to go through that if we ask questions. It takes five minutes, and now we can answer a question one at a time. See? Uh, in a downtrend, why do you set the support lines? Because that's the target. Did you, uh, uh, Pedro, did you watch the video on the wide open spaces? Did you watch that video? If you watch that video, you'll see that, that the preponderance of evidence is that well over 95% of the time, they will go to those support lines. 95% of the time. Now, 95% is better than you can trade, Pedro. So you better pay attention to it. You can say, I don't want to do that all you want, but if the market goes there 95% of the time, that's what the market does. See? We don't give that information out. Our, our moving average settings are very, very proprietary to us. No, we stay out of the news, Al, AJ. Uh, please explain again how to tell if your fibs are correct or not. Okay, good good question right there. When you put your fibs on, you first the first thing you have to do is get direction, which means the first thing you do is a trend. Because right? you need to know whether you're putting fibs on down or if the trend is up, are, are we putting fibs on to the upside? All right? Once we know the trend direction, then we put the fibs on on a swing low and a swing high right here that, uh, that will give us the Fibonacci's in the area we're going into. All right? You understand that? Um, let's see who asked that. Uh, BJ, if you're a five pips trader, you won't be here very long. Uh, so Nancy, okay, Nancy. All right? So now, once we do that, let me just pop to another chart and I'll do it real quick. All right. Let me let me go to a chart that I can just real quickly draw on. All right. So let's do this one right here. We'll just take the the New Zealand the dollar yen. All right. And we'll, we'll do this one right here. All right. This move is this is how you practice it, by the way. How do you practice it? You go in the past, you say, I'm gonna work on fibs on the two forty chart today. So you go in the past where you have printed material and you go in the past and say, Okay, here I am, I'm at the bottom of a, of an uptrend. I can see this trend really quickly here. All right, so you know, I'm just drawing it real quickly. Okay, I need I need to know where the targets are up here. How do I find that out? Well, I got to go find a swing high, swing low that will give me the targets here. Well, I got one right here. Swing low, swing high. If I click on these two, I'm going to get lines in here, up here for the fibs. All right, that's how you do that. All right, so I'm going to do it. <clears throat> all right, clicking on the swing low, the swing high. All right, now I've got now I have these lines on, and now they got to prove to me they are stopping on these lines. Are they stopping? Are they bouncing? Are they stopping? Are they stopping? Are they stopping? Are they stopping? Are they bouncing? Are they stopping? See? Now, I got all that preponderance of evidence that says yes. Now, when I break up above here, this is becomes a target, this becomes a target, and this becomes a target. You see, it's part of the wide open space. It's not the only part, it's a piece of the wide open space. And you can see why we want to know fibs, because the market respects them. The market respects them. The market respects them. If you don't have them on here and you trade right into that line right there and it stops and to, whips down 70 pips, you go, daggone broker, stop me out again. No, you didn't have the line on. See? I can't trade. I can trade to this line, but I can't trade in that line. See? That's the deal. All right. Now, let's see what happens. See? 
This is how you practice it, folks. Everything you do is you do the same thing I'm doing right here. You want to do PSR? Do the same thing. You want to do fit? What? Do the same thing. All right. So here we go. Let's watch what they do. Right up to the line. Bam. There it is. All right. Break through. Right up to the next one. Break through. Right up to the next one. Now let me ask you. Do you think they knew that line? Do you think they knew that line? And do you think you knew that line? Yes. Did we know that before the market moved? Yes. All right. So where, where was our opportunity? Wide open space. See how easy that is? That's crazy. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, David, how often do you teach at charting? Every day, David. Uh, is this webinar recorded? Yes, it is. How do I join the trade room? You'll get an opportunity tomorrow, Ken. Uh, Maurice, too fast? You're not going to get it in the first time. Maurice, you need about 75, 80, 100 times going through it. And we have lessons that you practice. We have uh, uh, whole lessons on just Fibonacci's, and it tells you what you're supposed to do. And then you go in the market and you practice it. And then you do it again with the PSRs, and you practice it. Who thinks they're going to get it in one time through, two, three, and two here live? You're not. But you need to see that it works. All right? Uh, downtrend, I think I already answered that. Pedro, in a downturn, why do you set the support lines? Because that's where they go, all right? So that's it. Same thing with an uptrend. Where do they go? Uh, they got, they're, going to, uh, they're, going to, they're, they're going to resistance, which was previous support, all right? So if you, don't, if you didn't see the video, you need to watch the Wide Open Spaces video, all right? Which is how most of you got in here, all right? Uh, white lines, how do we put those on? This one, it's just a horizontal line, a vertical line. Just click it and put it. I mean, what? I mean, it's charts. Charts have all those kind of tools on it. That's it. Uh, do you put homework to the students? Absolutely. You get homework every day. During our, during our, our initial, you know, they get homework every day. Uh, you'll, be no, you'll be notified, Trevor. Yeah. So, uh, plastic catch up. Okay, would you please share the value of a don't? We don't have don't you channels. First of all, Vic, there is no don't you channel. There's just a bottom and a top. That's the yellow line. Moving averages are a proprietary algorithm that we developed of a number. We do not give it out. The only person who has the number of our moving averages, or actually any of our settings, is our lawyer, and they are locked up in a safe. All right. All right. So, uh, CADN. Okay, let's go look at the CADN. Nothing happening yet. We're waiting. Nothing at all. All right. See, we were waiting for the announcement this morning. We had a CAD announcement. It didn't do anything. See, that's why you sit on your hands on an announcement. We're waiting for a sell. All right? We're waiting for the sell to the downside. All right? That's what we're looking for. Has it happened yet? No, it hadn't happened yet. We can take this off now because it's no longer there. This one, I can take off. No, come off here. All right. So uh, they don't serve the same purpose. If they all hit the same thing, then we would be, we would be fine. Uh, the HSI is is a algorithm that gives you an area, all right? That's based on uh, Fibonacci sequence. It's based on support and resistance. It's done all that, all right? We use it as a confirmation because it's really good at finding waves, all right? By itself, it's 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 wonderful. But every time the market doesn't go to the HSI, you see here they know exactly where it was. 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 But every time it doesn't move to that, there's a fib or something in here, which is why you got to know that. Right? You have to. Know, it's it's all about. Do you want do you want the information you need to trade, or do you only want half of it? Right? What if you went to a, every time you saw a, a stoplight, 50% of the time the light didn't change for you. You had to guess whether it was going to go red or green. That's the same thing as trading without the information. Uh, I don't have all the information. I I don't have enough information to know whether this is a stop or a go on this stop sign. It's the same thing here. You've got to have the information that allows you to make a business decision. If you don't have the information to make a business decision, you're not trading. You're gambling. Go to Las Vegas. Close your broker account down. Take your money to Las Vegas, and at least a pretty girl will bring you a drink while you're gambling. If you don't have the information. All right. So we're the only ones with the HSI. Do you need an HSI? No, you don't need an HSI. All right. Does it help? Absolutely. And you can see exactly why I'm telling you that. Because the market goes to there, goes to there, goes to there, goes to there, goes to there. All right. If it breaks below here, we're going to try to go to the next one. And you notice they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Why? Because as the market moves and more people get uh, recognized the move is underway, more participants come in. So the space between them gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So. We just watched as the market went to every single yellow line 
basically to the pit. If we break into this area right in here, we're going to look for that target. Why? Because they've already told you. We know that one. We know that one. We know that one. See? That's it. All right. Uh, uh, what about trend lines on 240 charts? They're only found on 240 charts, James. There are no trend lines except for that. Uh, you can, once you got, you know, every six candles on a 240 chart becomes a day. After you got 12, 15, 20 days, it becomes a day chart trend. It may still be, it's still on a 240 chart, but it's still, it's now measuring the days, and you can now find another 240 trend inside it. The market moves like this. Let me find you a chart uh, that will illustrate this. Here we go. Give me a second. All right. So you can see here. I've got a day chart trend to the upside. These are 240 charts, uh, trends inside. 240 up, we can trade it up. 240 down, we can trade it down. 240 up, we can trade it down. 240 down, uh, down, we can trade it down. What are we looking for? The fifth wave to the upside. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave. We're looking for a fifth wave to the upside. Because we trade the 240 inside the day chart, we can trade both ways. All right? So that's how that works. All right, let's see, uh, what do you need, both FIBA and so, okay, um, uh, yes, it does, Steve. It's all about finding the support and resistance and the Fibonacci. It, Fibonacci's are about herd mentality. Support and resistance uh, reacts off of previous herd mentality. The reason the, the, the previous support or resistance is important is because if the market stopped on a FIB. So it stopped on a FIB and reacted on the FIB. What did that do? That created a support or a resistance. What did that do? That goes into the future as a support and resistance, doubly strong because it was originally a fib. That's why they're so strong. That's why they're so powerful. That's why you got to know where they are. All right? That's it. Yeah. Uh, you look only on the 10 minute chart or maybe the five. Sometimes you got to go down to the three, Julius, for the hook. Depends on how fast the currencies are moving. They're moving really fast. But a break hook and go, remember, a break hook and go requires one candle down, one candle up, and one candle which is to go. All right? Now, if that's 10 minutes, that takes 30 minutes to do. All right? But what if the market's moving fast? Then you get down to a three-minute chart. So this one candle right here has got a three-minute down, a three-minute up, and a three-minute down. All right? You've got to find it. All right? Fast-moving market, you go to the three-minute chart. We're not going to trade a three-minute chart. We're just trying to nail an entry. We've already figured it out on a 240. See? So that's it. All right. You can open it up again, Pip. Uh, at least the questions are getting much better. Notice that? The quality of the questions has risen dramatically since Monday. <laughs> uh, Jack, you, uh, uh, Rich, you look for resistance below price, but only if they produce a subsequent swing low. I don't really understand your question. If you're looking for previous support or resistance, if I'm looking for my support, if I'm looking for my support down here, okay, support, which will stop the market, i got to go back in the past and find the resistance which will create this support. That's why your brain rejects it. Okay, I learned Spanish when I was 40 years old. When I was 40 years old, I went to school in, in Mexico, and I lived with a family, and they told me trash is basura. And my brain said, no, it's not. Garbage, but trash is garbage. And they said, no, it's basura. Wait, wait, no. Why? Because it was different. Once I got it through my head that, oh, wait a minute. In Spanish, it's basura, but in English, it's garbage. Then I could, I could make the choice of, if I'm speaking Spanish, to say basura. Right? Now, what ends up happening to traders is they reject that. Your brain says Re support cannot be also resistance. And all you got to do is work through that same thing. Resist support in the future was resistance in the past. Resistance in the future was support in the past. All right, that's it. So that's what you do. All right. Uh, price seems to cycle up and down through fib points um, uh, between penny round numbers. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, on Fib price points three, five, thirteen, thirty-four, fifty. Yeah, it's because they're fibs. That's a Fibonacci sequence, Bill. Right? It's it's thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one forty-four, two thirty-three, three seventy-seven, five sixty-six. Got to memorize them all. Right? That's why it's Fibonacci sequence. That's what they do. They do it over and over and over again. So we don't fight them. We go go with them. That's why we use Fibonacci's. Okay. Best play for news times Forex Factory PR. Uh, how New Zealand's now stopped out. Okay, so there we go. Stopped out on a wick. One wick. Now, if it turns and goes again, we trade it again, folks. We trade it again. I can't help it that it stopped. I can't make it go. I can't do that. All right? 
So there's our seventh loss of the year. All right, seventh loss of the year. Wow. That's all? That's all. Got wicked out by three pips. If it turns and goes to the downside, we're going to trade it again. All right? It's got all there is to it. But what's our problem now? Late in the season. It's late in the session. All right? Now, what was our risk? All right? What did we get stopped out on here? Where did you take the trade? Wherever you took the trade. It's not very big. How big was the loss? 15 pips? 18 pips? What was it? I don't know. In fact, let's 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 find out what the losses were. Let's do the loss count so we can add it to our record. All right. So, uh, if I don't, Carlos, when I don't understand the chart, I pay very little attention to fundamental analysis chart, Carlos. But when I don't understand the chart, I sit on the sidelines. Okay. All right. Losses here. Uh, zero and plus five when it moved, okay. Uh, we got plus, uh, you got a plus five. I'm looking for losses, okay. 32, 29, 36, 41. How did you get a 41? Man, that's a that's selling at the bottom when you get a 41 pip there like that. Wow. All right. So why we take them up here. See, folks, that's why the purpose of the break and the hook is to get it up at the top. Break, hook, and go. Right in here is where we go. See where it's taking off? That's where we go. <clears throat> this should have been your loss right there. So, so let's call it a 29 pip. You want to call it 29? Does that look about right? 29 pip. All right. So there you go. 29 pips. Whoopie do. Our average winning trade is 56 pips. All right. There you go. All right. So if it turns and goes again, we're going to trade it again. All right. I can't make it move. Does any Does anybody have the power to make this these candles do what you want them to? No. Nothing. All right, let me look at the questions we got here. Uh, okay. Uh, you set fibs between uh, HSI or support resistance down and forth. You take it on the swing low, swing high, Alex. The swing low, swing high, whatever that is and what you're looking for. All right? So, for instance, here, if we want to find, find a roadmap for down here, we would take the swing high, swing here, and find the extensions for here. That gives us a place to move our stop. So we use fibs for all kinds of things, and you can't learn it in four minutes in here. It's just all there is to it. I can show it to you once, but I can't show it to you like you can get it, right? So we can see. Now I got fib extensions here to tell me exactly where to move my stop. I use fibs for a totally different thing, right? But on the big picture, right? In the big picture, we go up to the 240, right? We can see that I've got fibs right here from this. Hold on. I have fibs here from this swing low to this swing high which is giving me these numbers, these big numbers down in here. All right. Oh, excuse me, that's not, that's not even true. I'm using the Fibonacci extension key, sorry. <clears throat> From here, down to here, this, down to here, which is giving me this, 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 and this. You can see the big picture is all the way down to here with big wide open spaces because that's the big boys' targets. So if you, if you find the big boys' targets by spending your time on the 240, you go only the only reason we go down to ten is just to go make an entry. We never they're never down there ever again. You go down there and finally figure it out, say, okay, now I'm gonna go down to ten. Figure it out there. Uh, do you watch your trader charts? Absolutely, Tom. You gotta watch for the correlations, all right? British pound uh, is the ba the base currency is the British pound. You gotta know that's how we, we nailed all those early this week on the uh, on the uh, Aussie. All right, we figured out the Aussie. All right. Once you figure out the Aussie, you can trade all the crosses. That's four or five different opportunities. Well, let me pull it up here and see what we got here for. I want to look and see what I know. Yeah, Euro Aussie, Euro Aussie, Euro Aussie. Then early on it was the pounds. We had a lot of a lot of on the pounds that we had. We we traded most of the correlated currencies. Did we trade the pound dollar? Very rarely, because it doesn't have an ATR. The ATRs are small in the majors. Trade the crosses. Yeah, but man, the stop is bigger than two pips on the euro. I'm used to trading for one or two pips on the euro, man. That's why I'm in it. That's what happens to traders. All right. So, all right. Uh, how far in a chart do we look for PSR? So you look for them as uh, your bankers are lazy just like us. And if you can find them right here, great. If you find any big, big area, you got to keep working back to see do they uh, have they ever filled that thing in? If they never filled it in, then you know it's good. And you, you'll get confirmation of that really quickly. See, there's a big space from here 
down to here. But look what they did. They ran it. They ran it. Why did they run it? There's nothing to stop it. That's why if you'll do this, you'll really, you'll teach yourself. I should never trade unless I got a wide open space because I got the ability to make those kind of moves with those guys. See? Please draw a, cha a hook. It's a break, hook, and go. That's it. Look, there are a thousand different ways to do that, Rahil. A thousand different ways to do that. All right? It could go like this, come over like this, and go down like that. It could go fast. It could go, you know, there's a million ways to do it. But they break and they hook and they go because the market retraces 99% of the time. 99. So don't fight it. Go with it. That's what you got to do. Go with it. That's what the market does. Oh, but I don't like that it doesn't do that. Too bad. That's what it does. It does that. So we wait for it. Uh, let's see. Uh, in a break, hook and go, you must wait for the Kurt, Kurt Cannon. No, not necessarily, Beth, but that's a great question, by the way, Beth. Okay, you have, that's why you got to go see a thousand of them. All right? Because when you see the candle, the third candle is moving fast. All right? It's moving fast, then you want to take it then. All right? If it's moving slow, you say, well, let's just give it a little time and see if it can't get a little bit more momentum than just flopping around like a fish on the dock. See? So you can't answer that with black and white, Beth. All right? But you gotta, you gotta go do the work. Here's what happens, folks. Everybody wants the answer. The answer is real simple. I'll tell you what it is. Go do the work. Any question you have in the forex, every question you've been asked in here is very simply answer, answered. You go into the work, uh, into the chart, and see what the chart tells you to do. All right? So Matt says, how far in a chart do we look for PSR? You go in the chart and keep going back until you get the PSRs, and you'll eventually answer your own question. And then you won't have to say, well, Scott says I should wait for this. What you say is, Matt knows that I only have to go this far, and if I have a big space, I go see if I have it filled. If it isn't filled, I'm good to go. See? Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for anything I have said. Go prove it to yourself. You know what happens? Most traders won't do it because they're stinking lazy. They're lazy, 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 lazy. And they don't read, and they don't take it uh, take direction well, uh, and that's what makes me a boot camp guy every once in a while. I got to be a boot camp guy to help you get to the next level. Uh, but my traders who are in here will tell you that sometimes uh, Andrew is a good example. Andrew and I in the early days we had we butted heads quite a lot. Andrew and I did butt heads, and now you see what Andrew's doing. Popped out twenty five hundred pips this week already. Right? Uh, see. It's all about making you better. Right? So, uh, all right. Uh, I think I got all the questions answered above. Uh, so, we're good. All right. So, did you answer Rich's uh, clarifying question? Let me see. When you look for support edge, your point out swing highs are followed by swing lows. Opposite for or I'm confused what swing high requires. A subsequent swing low. Okay. Oh, because I see what you're saying. I got you. Uh, what has to happen is it has to it has to be part of moving the currency. All right. So I, I didn't understand the question before. Let me let me find you one here. All right. So let me let me find you one. Now that I'm looking for one, I can't find one. Of course. Okay. Here's one right here. All right. All right. Here's the resistance right here. All right. So in order for it to be uh, to be qualified as a PSR, it has got to produce a a lower high. All right. So what did this do? It came down here and stopped. It did not do it. So it didn't continue the move. It pops back up. This one, however, drives the moving down. This is the one you take. All right. Because it created the continuation. All right. That's that's a, that's how you how you determine whether this was real or not. All right. Because unless it continued, right? Unless it continued the move, it's it, it's a it's an attempt to try to make it happen, but it's not being successful. See, we want we want the moves that have been successful in driving the currency, right? So that's what that's what you're looking for. It's how do I find those lines, right? And it, see, when you put your lines on and you go back in time and you start watching them, you're gonna go, oh my gosh, look at these. Why why did, what are they doing here? Why are they making these moves? Why are they making these? Why are they making these moves? 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 Because that's where the wide open space is. Why did they make this big move right here? See? Now you look and you go, oh, it looks like the only place they really move is in the wide open spaces. Guess what? That is answer correct. Yes, exactly correct. The only time that doesn't happen is when you have a fundamental announcement that drives right through them. Uh, other than that, they're going to move through the lines. 
So, but you have to go do thousands of these. The minimum you do of anything is 300. Okay, reticular cognition requires that your data, your mind, have 300 uh, images in its database. All right, 300 images. All right. So if you want to do fibs, you've got to do 300 up, and then it takes 24 hours off for your brain to build a retrieval system to those 300 images. All right. Then you've got to do fibs to the downside. 300 more to the downside, and then you take 24 hours off and build a retrieval system. That's what your brain does when you sleep. All right? What happens to traders? I'm going to go do fibs. I'm going to do PSRs. I'm going to do trends all today. And now you've got mud up there. And now you've got to find a way to ex extract it out of your brain. And that takes literally weeks, maybe months. All right? So what happens to traders? They don't do it correctly. All right? So all right, got that question answered. We're good. Anybody else? All right. Now, notice, of all things, the only trade that we actually took so far this week in, in class was a loss. Can you believe that? Crazy. All right. So, uh, 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 we have some uh, reading material, uh, Tom, uh, but the big thing is if you when you, when you, if you join our mentorship program, you have to do it. You get it all, okay, because you're reading all that. But if you don't, the part here's the deal. It is a visual business. You can't read about it. You have to go visually do it, all right? Uh, ES just broke out of the hourly chain down there. Do you have time to review the chart? ES. What is the ES? Euro what? What is the ES, Beth? I don't know. You're talking about the S&P 500? We don't, we don't watch the S&P 500, so I don't have it even here. Okay. Oh, I got you. S&P minis. I got you. We don't trade them. So I don't, we're Forex traders, folks. I don't, we don't trade over there. We don't, you can do it all day long, but we don't do it. Uh, it all works. It's all technical analysis. It's technical analysis at its finest. All right? So it works in any market. All right? But the S&P 500, and the, those are dog markets, right? Dog markets. The entire New York Stock Exchange today is going to do $150 billion. Do you know that in that's Forex, there are $800 billion of retail traders, six times bigger than a New York Stock Exchange of retail traders, not counting the big boys here. Right? That's why we do $5.7 trillion a day. That's why technical analysis works like crazy here. The less, uh, less, value, the less volume you have, the worse technical analysis works. Right? And if you've asked to trade those, okay. Uh, let's see, uh, Bill, you already, yeah, we already talked about that. Uh, it's because it's working on a se sequence, okay. Uh, you'll get an a uh, answer to that tomorrow. Uh, uh, SP5, I got gotcha. you. Can you show the go candle on the on the pound New Zealand? Sure. All right, here's the break. First, you've got to define the break. There's the break. That's the candle to the downside. Two candles to the upside are the hook. There is the go. All right. Now, what do they do? Remember, I said the safe, safe stop is up here, but you can stop this one right here. We stop this one right here. We're taking the loss. What are they going to do now? If they break this thing, what should we do? There's a set of twins to the downside. We get follow through right here. This is a place you should take the trade again. Well, you just got stopped down, man. The trade is right. The time is right. I can't make the cart to cart the, uh, the candles move. But if they move, I can take it. So there it is. Now, now you got a whole new set. All right, you have to make a decision whether you trade on the break of this line or you break now below here again. All right, and I can give you this right here is exactly what they could do again. All right, and if they do that, then they're going sideways. That means they don't have enough sellers. Do I know that how many sellers they got? No, I don't know that. That's called trading. You have to make an educated guess based on the business situation that has evolved that is in front of you. Right? I don't know what it's going to do. I haven't got a clue. 
but it's still showing me signs that we're trying to go to the downside. You see that? That's what it's showing me. We're still trying to go downside. Right? So, what platform are you using? These are our charts. These are product traders' charts, Jan. They're ours. Right? They're ours. We invented them because we're traders. We couldn't get MT4 to do it. Okay, open questions uh, above from Sandra and Nick and Tom. So let's see, where is Sandra, Nick, and Tom? Okay. Uh, Sandra. Uh, well, if the 240 chart breaks up or down, do you wait for the 240 chart closing the break? Uh, it's good to do that, Sandra, but you don't have to do it because, remember, it's a 60-minute chart. There are four 60-minute candles inside the 240. All right? The big boys are trading on the 240, and they're entering on the 60. So if they do it on the 60, they're the ones who did it. See? So it's all about real estate of the day. There's no black and white answer to that. Today it may be the 240 chart. Tomorrow may be the 60-minute chart. All right? Depends on the real estate of the day. There is no black and white answer to this. This is why trading is hard. This is why it's a lot of work because you've got to deal with all the nuances of trading and figure it out. All right? Now here's the deal. You don't move unless the big boys are doing it, all right? which means the 240 and the 60. All right? That's who they're trading on. Anything below that doesn't matter. Now, if you look on there and it says it's broken a major, major deal and it's on a 60-minute chart, then that's the big boys who did it, all right? So that takes six candles to do that. So if you look here, what can we see? On this one right here. Have they done it? Not yet. See? They have not opened and closed the candle on a 60-minute below here. Close, but not really yet. We're still looking for this. Anybody see what one of the problems we got here? I'll tell you what one of the problems is right here. Your job is to constantly, constantly work these charts, folks. You see the problem there? Everybody see this problem right here? That's where the problem is. So the question is, what if I got a trade? What if this starts to take off right here and it only goes to there? Could I make money to there? The answer to that is, yes, you could. It's about 50 pips. Right? 97.50 down to 97.06, roughly 50 pips, see? Uh, Graham, we don't ever look at that crap. On a one, two, down on one minute, two. no reason to be in a one minute chart unless you're, uh, unless, that is the worst habit you can get is to go down to the one minute chart. The only reason to use a one minute chart is doing a fundamental announcement because everything's going to happen 10 minutes faster, all right? It could do it on a tick chart too. It does one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D on a tick chart. Do we pay, care about it? No. Do we care about it on one? No. Do we care about it on 10? No. Do we care about it on 30? No. Do we care about it on 60? Yes. Do we care about it on 240? Yes. Why? Because the big boys are there. Who's the big boys? The guys who print these candles. They're the guys who print these candles. Nobody else prints these candles but big boys. All right? There's two of them. And then, actually, there's 10, but the two biggest are Deutsche Bank and Citibank. 30% of all the trades in, the, in uh, Forex are done by these two banks. All right? 5%, these are 5% of, the, of the, all the people in the market, and they control 92% of the volume. So 92% of every candle that you see is formed by a big boy. The big boys are never on a one-minute chart. They, they're never below a 60. So. All right, uh, where are we at here? I'm trying to find all the questions. Do you give considerations and around the zero? We give, give consideration. No, okay. consideration of the 50s and the zeros. Why? Because of option contracts. And to prove that, go look at the notes. Go look at the notes and see where the option contracts are. Even numbers, 50s and zero numbers. The only other number that's on there, other than the 50s and the zeros, would be the fives. Like, for instance, on the euro dollar, the third one in is a 1.35425, right? which is the very reason why we do not use a 5 in our stop. Right? We cannot use a 0. We can't use a, 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 um, a, a, any even numbers. But we can't use a 5. Why? Because it's part of the option contracts. You see that? So we don't use them. And that gives us only two numbers to end in, 3 and 7. Never an even number. Only a three or a seven. So every stop you ever have is on a three or a seven and never a five. All right. So, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, where are we at? Down at the bottom. Okay, sorry. Uh, still have Nick and Tom. Okay, Nick wants to know how you manage 28 pairs. We don't manage 28 pairs, Nick. 
We don't measure. We actually watch 19 currencies, number one. And out of that, what we're doing is we're going through there and we're finding the four or five that might be possible for us today. Uh, four or five. All right? That's all we watch. Well, we look at 19. Why? Because we are 24-hour day business. So we have to have plenty of opportunities in the in the Asian market. That means we have four or five yen crosses. We have to have plenty of opportunities in the Sydney market. That means we have to have plenty of Aussie and New Zealand crosses. We have to have plenty of opportunities in the London market, which means everything, and the same thing with the New York. See? So that's the reason. Right? We don't trade 19 currencies. This morning we, we, uh, we had got it down to five currencies we were watching, and the only one that we, we actually were able to enter in was this uh, pound New Zealand. Right? That's the only one. Right? Can't make them work. And it's, the, it's nine farm payroll week, the worst week to trade. But, you know, we still made over 1,000 pips this week. Actually, we're now at about, uh, oh, maybe 1,200 pips maybe at this point. All right? So... Uh, all right, so I think I got them all answered here. So, yeah, we're going to do a, we've been going two hours and 40 minutes now. So here's what we're going to do, folks. We're going to stop this recording, all right, and we're going to redo the session recap, all right? Now, the session recap is posted here. You've got already know where